Our scan detected contraband on board. Halt and prepare to be boarded. All illegal and stolen goods will be confiscated. I've got special orders. You're coming with me. Stand down and prepare for immediate transport to our vessel. I've been authorized to inform you that you're being transferred to the UC Vigilance. You'll find out more when you get there. Other than that, I'm not at liberty to divulge any additional information. Smart decision. Stand by to be boarded and transferred. Boarding a vessel like this certainly brings back memories. I'm telling you, the Commander's got plans for this loser. Why else would he be going through all this trouble? I still don't understand why he trusts a criminal. Seems like too much of a risk. Stop worrying and keep an eye on our guest. I'll be right back. You just sit tight. The commander wants to have a little chat. The prisoner is ready, sir. Discuss. I'm your ticket out of the mess you've gotten yourself into. That's all you need to know for now. Not this time. So, let me see what we're working with here. Hmm. Pretty unremarkable past. Not much to speak of there. I also see that you've mined on Vectera, and now you're with Constellation. You've certainly been quite busy. Oh, and look at that. Right at the bottom of this list is the criminal incident that landed you in my crosshairs. Good. You'll find that I'm a stickler for details, and I'd hate to discover that your file is complete. Now that we have that out of the way, let me introduce myself. My name is Commander Kibwe Ikande, and I'm in charge of this operation for UC Sysdev. Are you familiar with what we do? United Colonies System Defense. Does that help you figure out exactly what it is we do? UC Sysdev is a division of the UC Navy. While well, they handle the big picture stuff, we deal with a very particular problem. The Crimson Fleet. That convict is where you enter the picture. No. No, you don't. Not yet, anyway. We've been prodding at the Crimson Fleet for years, trying to take them down one ship at a time. We barely scratch the surface. If we can get someone on the inside, we'd have a shot at finding a loose thread we can pull to bring it all down. If the military rolls in and attacks the Crimson Fleet, we'd have a full-scale war on our hands. That means losses, heavy losses, that the United Colonies can't afford. Not for me, for yourself. Look, I'm going to make this simple. Agree to work for UC Sysdev, and together we take down the Crimson Fleet. Refuse, and I tell these guys to throw you into the nearest lockup. Might even tack on an extra few hundred credits to your fine. I'm not coercing you into doing anything. I'm simply giving you a chance to redeem yourself. So? What do you say? You going to work with me, or should I find someone else? You aren't leaving until I have an answer. If I didn't think you had a chance, I would have left you in lockup. You're just going to have to follow your instincts and trust me. Smart choice. 
I'm going to have one of my men escort you to the operations center. I strongly suggest that you don't give him any trouble. And don't bother trying to leave the ship. I think you'll find all access to the docking area is fully restricted. Let's go. So, you took the op instead of serving the time. Gonna be the commander's new mole, huh? Infiltrating a bunch of pirates. You've got a lot of guts. Hey, still, it makes you wonder. Especially with the stories that go around. Like the one about how the fleet deals with informants by lashing them to the hull of a ship and then slowly letting the air out of their suit. Could you imagine a worse way to go? I know I couldn't. But I wouldn't worry about it. And since the commander handpicked you, I'm guessing you can hold your breath for a really long time, right? Yes, what? All right, this is as far as I go. Take the lift up to Ops. Commander Ikande should be waiting for you. <clears throat> Howdy. Excuse me. Ah, there you are. Excellent. Now that we've established your level of cooperation with us, I want to introduce you to your new home. This is the operation center of the UC Vigilance. Sysdef's nerve center dedicated to the destruction of the Crimson Fleet. Hmm, that's strange. According to your file, you've encountered them before. On Vectera specifically. They were the pirates that attacked your mining outpost, I'm surprised you don't remember. Whether this ship is impressive or not, you're the key element that we've been lacking. We need eyes and ears inside the Crimson Fleet. Someone who can feed us information, evidence, and expose their weaknesses. The catch is that you can't just knock on their front door and ask for an application. Getting inside is going to take some finesse. Let's get one thing straight right now. While you're working for me, I'm going to treat you like one of my own. Whatever crimes you committed in the past no longer matter. You're now an agent of Sister, meaning that it's my job to keep you alive. Good. I have just the right place for you to start. Our intelligence has managed to find a possible opening into the Crimson Fleet through Sersha Borden, one of their contacts. She works for the Trade Authority in Sidonia, so you'll be using a container of Aurora we've loaded on your ship to get her attention. That's classified. Suffice to say that the smuggler who was previously hauling it will be spending the rest of their life in prison. That's right. So it'll be your job to convince this person that you're the real deal. Once you bluff your way into the Crimson Fleet, then the operation proceeds to evidence gathering. That's where my second-in-command, Lieutenant Gillian Toft, comes into the picture. She'll explain everything you need to know. Let's just say my superiors need proof that engaging the Crimson Fleet is a larger priority than they're willing to admit. If we shove enough concrete evidence under their noses, they'll have no choice but to allocate the resources that I've requested. At the same time, we can use the evidence to arrest members of the Crimson Fleet weakening them enough to strike a fatal blow. We move quick around here. Better get used to it. Remember, this entire operation rests on your ability to infiltrate the Crimson Fleet and bring us the evidence we need to take them down.
At this point, whether you like it or not, you're working for me. Look, before you begin, I want to make something perfectly clear. As an undercover operative for UC Sysdef, you'll be expected to follow our code of conduct and ethics. Allow yourself to stray too far off the path, and you stand a good chance of spiraling out of control. The Crimson Fleet doesn't follow the rules. They only abide by one thing. Money. All of their morals and social graces fall by the wayside in pursuit of their greed. At first glance, this can appear quite enticing. So I'm warning you not to get lured into their trap. Think you can handle that? I don't want promises. I'm just asking you to think. Anyway, it's time to hand you over to Lieutenant Toft. She'll brief you about the details of the evidence-gathering portion of the operation. Now, get out of here, and good luck. That's easy to answer. You don't. We'll be monitoring your activities from the vigilance, and attempting to keep it within your vicinity. When you feel you've gathered enough evidence, and at the completion of your assignments, head back here for a debrief. Beyond that, you're completely on your own. For your own safety, nobody but myself and the crew of the Vigilance will be aware that you're working for the United Colonies. Basically, if you land in jail, you're going to have to deal with the fines. All we know is that she's been with the Trade Authority for years, which means she's been privy to some seriously shady deals. She's shrewd, and she's diligent. The only reason we were able to connect her with the Crimson Fleet at all was thanks to an informant. I'm afraid she's the best lead we've got. While you're running with the Crimson Fleet, you're undoubtedly going to be faced with some morally gray decisions. It's going to be difficult for you to weigh the consequences of pulling the trigger while maintaining your cover. Do what you have to do, but remember why you're out there in the first place. Then you do what you have to do. The Crimson Fleet has the potential to kill hundreds, even thousands of people per year. If it takes a few deaths to maintain your cover, then so be it but only as an absolutely final resort. This is not a license killing spree. Understood? That's why I expect you to constantly seek alternative means to overcome your obstacles, rather than blowing holes in them. Look, I can see that you're struggling with this. So let me simplify this for you. If there's a route to your goal which doesn't involve killing innocent people, I'm urging you to follow that path. Use your instincts. I'm certain you'll do the right thing. You have your orders. There's something I need to talk to you about. Yes? Thanks for taking time to chat. I... I really need a friendly ear right about now. I received a message from Constellation, and it's given me a lot to think about. Not at all. It's just a list of requests, but when you read between the lines, it's obvious my absence is causing issues. You're not keeping me out here. I am. Just... Here, let me explain. Before I joined Constellation, I served for eight years as the head of the Navigator Corps, until the UC decided to axe the department.
Yeah, I suppose painful is an appropriate way to put it. You see, the top brass demanded pressworthy discoveries to justify the spending, and money was tight after the war. Shutdown was inevitable. At the end of the day, I was in charge, so the blame obviously fell on my shoulders. Seriously? The colony war, of course. You know, that little incident that caused the death of thousands of decent men and women as they squabbled over border disputes? That war. <sighs> yeah? You once told me that you favored the journey over the destination. So I'm hoping you'll understand what I'm trying to say. I failed because I was more concerned about exploring the stars than pushing a pencil. Ah, because of my lack of foresight, all I ended up with was a shattered division and a bunch of excuses. That's just it, though. Did I push too hard? Did they shut us down because I wasn't quietly sitting at my desk approving meaningless memos? We'll never know. Yes, maybe. Call it whatever you want. My drive, my initiative, my optimism. <laughs> It's been my greatest strength and my worst nightmare. It elevates me to these positions of authority, but all I want to do is explore, not sit and make sure all the accounts are balanced. Yes, exactly. If it's obvious to you, imagine how obvious it is to someone like Barrett or Matteo. Oh, they must be itching to replace me by now. God damn it. No, no. Oh, I'm the one that should be apologizing. You have to understand, once Aja retired, I lost the only person that gave a damn. Look, it's clear that you have feelings for me. It's just, I've never had time for this sort of thing in my life. Please, it's not you, it's me. I'm just not ready to get that close. I can't, not now. Thank you for being there and listening. It helped. It really did. All right, we don't have a lot of time, so I need you to listen up. While you're working undercover, it's imperative that you gather as much evidence as possible. If you find any records that look suspicious or incriminating, you bring it to me. Is that understood? You better make it, because Commander Akande cashed in all his chips to get this operation off the ground. I want data slates, computer downloads, handwritten notes. Hell, I'll take anything if it'll get those bastards thrown into the brig. You're damn right I do. That minor skirmish you had with them on Vectera was nothing compared to the death and destruction those pirates leave behind. If you've seen what I've seen, you'd understand why I'm pushing you so hard. What? No. It's personal. It has nothing to do with you. Just stick to the mission and you'll be fine. That's all we're asking. Oh, before you go. There's one more thing. Commander Akande has authorized a credit disbursement 
for each piece of evidence that you return as compensation for your efforts. Well, that's just it. You're not career military, are you? And speaking frankly, you're completely out of pocket during this operation. You'll be paying for your own supplies and other unexpected incidentals. So if I were you, I'd stop asking questions and accept the compensation. It's not generous, it's motivational. Commander Akande's idea. All right, we've loaded a container of Aurora into your ship's cargo hold. We're also providing you with a sample you can use to tease the goods. We've cleared your ship for launch. Proceed to Sidonia. Make contact with Searsha Bowden. And with any luck, she'll point you to the Crimson Fleet. That should do it. You're dismissed. We'll be keeping them close at hand until this operation is complete. So, we'll be holding them in the Vigilance's brig. If you're feeling particularly ruthless, you could always head down there and say hello. I'm sure they'll be thrilled to see you. I'll be here if you have any more questions. <clears throat> Pardon. You want to talk to me? Look at this place. I can't imagine being cramped down here, choking on the fumes and the dust. No trees, no grass. It's depressing. Ever been to Aquila? Those security uniforms are way cooler than me. If you're here to buy or sell, you might want to talk to Octai. I'm busy. And by sensitive, I'm guessing you mean something you don't want UC security sticking their noses into. I can probably help you with that. What have you got for me? Whoa, way too hot for me. That stuff is nothing but bad news. Why don't you take your shipment and try somewhere else? The Trade Authority turning away contraband? Now I've seen everything. No, they're right. What they didn't tell you is that I have a self-preservation streak a kilometer wide. Of course, if there's a finder's fee you're offering, I might, well, bend the rules a little bit. You know, it's funny. Suddenly, I do remember someone who might be able to unload that stuff for you. Well, well. It appears she suddenly remembers everything. Hmm, how nice. There's a buddy of mine who runs with the Crimson Fleet. Goes by the name Adler Kemp. If he isn't passed out, you can find him killing the rest of his brain cells at the Broken Spear. Oh, and uh, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. Hmm? Take your time, and ask me if you need anything. I'm here to help. Yo, hey, what's up? You looking to do some shopping here at the Trade Authority? I'm Monaki. Feel free to ask me anything and I'll do my best to help you out. Cool. That's what we do here. Come back anytime. This here is the most important work in the galaxy. Unless you're here to serve me another drink, you can turn around and walk away. Oh, yeah? Well, I don't know who the hell you are. So what makes you think I'm going to help you out? Hey, why don't you say that a little louder? I don't think every single UC guard in Sedonia heard you. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we can help you with this. If you've got a whole shipment of this stuff, you're going to need to move it fast. But you're going to have to do something for us first.
You're a clever one, aren't you? Let's just say I have a certain influential affiliation. And leave it at that. Basically, you want that Aurora moved, I'm your guy. Right down to business, and no small talk. I like it. Well, this is utterly ridiculous. Do we really have to jump through these hoops to get what we need from you? <sighs> Lady, if you want me to move that shipment for your pal here, you're going to do whatever the hell I want. You got that? Now listen up, because I'm not going to repeat myself. I need you to deal with a miner who's racked up a bunch of debt. He probably spent it all on booze, not that I blame him. Either way, I want that money back. What do I need to do here? Write you an instruction manual? You can do this loud, you can do this quiet. I don't care. I just want my goddamn money, and I want this guy to remember who he screwed over. Perfect. His name's Carl Fielding. I think you'll find him wandering around the Deimos Miners' quarters. Don't worry, you can't miss him. Just look for the most miserable looking guy in the entire place. Something I can help you with? Adler Camp. Who the heck is that? Uh, what? Uh, play what games? You're obviously confusing me with someone else. Look, I'm tired. It's been a long day in the mines. I just want to go home, wash off the dust, and relax. This has been fun, though. Whatever. Uh, hey, hey, now. <laughs> Take it easy there. Let me think about that person you mentioned. Uh, Adler, was it? Hmm? Oh, wait. You mean that Adler? Yeah, sorry. I thought you were talking about someone else. I told him I'd pay up next week when Deimos cuts our next profit share check. I'll even bring it to him personally. Hmm? Sound good? Yeah? Uh, well, I mean, he doesn't really have a choice. Look, I haven't got a single credit to spare right now, okay? He can't squeeze blood from a stone. You know? Right? Perhaps he's already been through enough. <sighs> I'm a miner for Deimos. It's not what I was hoping for out of life. But here I am. Yeah, it's a lousy company. It pays me a salary. But I depend on the profit-sharing bonuses to keep food on the table for my family. Hey, 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 now wait a second. Just because things are tough, and I might be spending my afternoons at the spear, it doesn't mean I don't care about my family. Adler doesn't get to judge me. No, he's just a low-life pirate who thinks he can push everyone around. Holy crap! Really? You do that for me? Wow. I don't even know what to say. Thank you. For everything. And don't worry. I'll never borrow anything from Adler again. I promise. Can I 
have something for me? There, would you look at that? I knew that bum was holding out on me. He going to be a problem anymore? Or did he get the message? Nice, nice. You're kind of a natural at this. Leaning on deadbeats comes easy to you. I like that. You know, if you like this kind of work, I can get you more. A lot more. You think you can handle running with my, uh, associates? If you haven't figured that out by now, then maybe you aren't cut out for our line of work. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I like your style. All right. I'll call ahead and get a hold of Neva Mora. She's second to the big boss himself. Head out to Europa. You'll find her there. I suggest you listen to whatever she has to say. Oh, and I've taken care of that Aurora shipment for you, too. Don't spend all that cash in one place. Something you need?
All right. And what are your intentions with this crewman? sure what to make of you being here. If you wanted to kill us, you could have done that from your ship. If you wanted our cargo, we could have jettisoned it. I guess I should just stop talking and let you say your piece. That is true. Which means you don't want somebody to know what you are really up to. Now, do you mind telling us what this is all about? You really do not know which one of us is Rake, do you? And you do not seem to care either, which makes me think you really want to save him. Okay, I have idea. We can strike his name from Manifest, make it so he was never on board. Then, when we dock, we will leave him on this ship and deliver him to another port. That is fair. We do not want any part of the fleet. Is that all right with you, Austin? Do I have a choice? It does not appear you do. Well then, it is agreed. You go back to your ship and we will make sure Rake was never on ours. And in case any of your handlers get suspicious, here. We had an extra crate of supplies loaded, in case one got damaged. This should be proof you were not here to bargain. Thank you for letting us go. So now what? You're gonna put me in a cis-deaf prison? I'm not saying it's worse than death, but it's pretty damn close. Witnesses behind, but at least 
least you got the job done. Anyway, you want it into the Crimson Fleet? Well, you're in. Yep, it's that simple. Hope this business with Rakes taught you something. Because I'm about to stick my neck out and vouch for you. If you screw up, and I wind up looking like an asshole, I'm gonna send someone after you. We clear? already dug yourself a hole about six feet deep. And now that you know the deal, it's time to see what you signed up for. I'm gonna upload the coordinates for our headquarters in the Crick system. Spacers call it the key, the fleet calls it home. Head out there as soon as you can. Don't keep me waiting long. Well, we're in. I hope you know what you're doing. we headed next. Sometimes we'll take the long-range fighters out for grab jump or for a high traffic We're back. Anything to report? We got the message from the Ragana about Austin Rick. We had him dropped off at a separate port, off the books. Suffice to say, he's got a lot to answer for. That's something we're looking into. But it doesn't seem like he knows much. He might be better served as bait. For now, we'll keep him in the brick. Perhaps you could pay him a visit there sometime? I'm sure he'd be pleased to see you. That was quick thinking on your part. Selfless and creative. Our regular agents can be a little too rigid, because they're trained to follow orders. It's a clever gambit, Commander. Adaptability is key to the success of this operation. Oh, one more thing before we move on. For transparency's sake, you should know we were the ones that hired Ecliptic to attack Neva's ship. There was concern after what happened with the Regana that you might have trouble earning Neva's trust. Coming to her rescue ensured that would not be a problem. They are mercenaries for hire. If they are paid enough money, Cliptic would attack the Vigilance. It wasn't terribly difficult to convince them to attack an isolated Crimson Fleet ship. Just expensive. Ah, so I take it you have good news. Were you able to join the fleet? No miracle. Just calculated and careful planning, courtesy of UC Sysdev. You should learn to be more confident in our abilities, and your own. Now it's time for the next phase of the mission. Our intel on Searsha was correct. After we received reports on your interaction with Adler Kemp, we picked up on your rendezvous with Neva Mora. Our files indicate she's second in command. So getting on a good side will ensure you get into the Crimson Fleet. The woman has a record that could stretch across Seoul and back. She started young as one of Neon's street rats and worked her way up to second in command. 
She's a force to be reckoned with, so don't underestimate her. Yes, you pass your first test and you're still alive. But before we get too confident, that either means she suspects nothing, or she intends to make an example of you later. Just remember, these are ruthless criminals, so don't let your guard down. And their ruthlessness is only surpassed by their cunning. You should proceed with caution, regardless of how well you think you've ingratiated yourself. So what's next for you on Neva's agenda? Excellent. If you're heading to the Key, I assume you'll be meeting Delgado soon. Delgado is the leader of the Crimson Fleet. I have a profile here with some information on his background. You'll want to know the individual cadences of every member of the fleet, but Delgado's most of all. Agreed. The last thing we need is to infiltrate the fleet, only to be kicked out because we've underestimated one of their people. I don't disagree, but it's important to know your enemy and the best way to defeat them. In any case, now that you're with the fleet, you'll be operating independently. We will shadow you eventually, but we'll need to maintain our distance for now, especially while you're on the key. This will also give us time to bolster our defenses, should we need to engage with the fleet in the future. Sir, on that note, shall we begin implementing the upgrade to our shields? Immediately, Lieutenant. Notify the engineers and relay the information to the crew. I hope your entry into the fleet has overcome any doubts you may have had regarding your mission. It certainly increased my estimates on success. Keep up the good work. We'll expect further reports. Dismissed. Let's get this crate into space. Red here and there all over the station. Grim work. The spanner's torque is what the eye needs now. We'll fix our good as new. The eye is showing signs over another one of those big anomalies. Here, catch a smile. you so long. Forget how to grab jump or something? I don't care. Time is money and you've wasted both. That ends today. Clear? But all that aside, you made it. So now you get to hear a nifty history lesson. Pencils ready? Good. 
This floating scrap heap you're standing on is called the Keep. Used to be an old UC military star station, and now it's the fleet's base of operations. Might look a little beat up on the outside, but we keep it together. <laughs> you think? And that's only part of it. I'll let Delgado fill you in on the whole story. He tells it better anyway. But I can give you the short version while we walk the station. Story time? Hmm, how delightful. Anyway, I'll tell you all about the key. But it's better if I show you too. Follow me. So, the key is in orbit around Suvorov. That's the very same ice ball where the United Colonies built a supermax prison they call the Lock. The UC is so clever. Supermax prison, Lock, key, huh, cute, huh? Now. We've got everything the fleet needs right here. Of course, you've got to pay for it. Remember, on the key, credits are key. What the hell is this? All right, all right, hang on, Nev. Before you get pissed, I've got my hands full. Jasmine, sweetie, I'm trying to give a tour here. So you want to tell me why those damn doors are sealed? It's called a malfunction, you know. That thing I spend most of my day dealing with, believe me, my people are on it. Have a little faith for once. Aww. And you always, Angel. This here is Jasmine. You need anything for your ship, she's got you covered. We'll hit up the depot next since these doors have given out on us. So anyway, we were talking about the lock. About a hundred years ago, the prisoners down there rioted and took over the place. After stealing some ships, they were actually able to make it up here and took over the key. About time you brought us new blood, Neva. I was getting tired of trading with the same old faces. You're just ticked everyone's getting wise to your ridiculous prices, Alutra. Anyway, welcome to the depot, Brooke. Well, you'll be lucky if these blood-sucking leeches don't bleed you completely dry. Whoa, whoa. It's not our fault that people don't appreciate how much it costs to get untraceable merchandise onto the key. Neva's just finding because she thinks she lost a ton of cash selling us a shipment of gear. She should have done her homework. Yeah, sure, laugh it up. I'll remember that next time I need something from you cheapskates. Let's move on. <clears throat> Back to my story. After the liberated prisoners grabbed the key, they established it as a base of operations and began pirating the spaceways. That was how the Crimson Fleet began. Of course, Jasper Cricks had a lot to do with all that, but uh, we'll get to him later. Rook, meet Zuri, queen of the rare exports. If I don't have it, you don't need it. Neuroamps, blueprints. Hit her up and she'll take care of you. Speaking of which, you still owe me for that last purchase, Neva. It's like five figures. Don't make me collect it the hard way. <laughs> the hard way? Oh no. Rook, protect me from Zuri's vengeance. Enough of the bullshit, Zuri. I'll pay you when I pay you. Deal with it. Got a problem with that? Take it up with the boss. On the right, you've got Bradley from the Trade Authority. I'm sure you know the deal there. He'll buy pretty much anything, no matter how hot. Then we got our med bay on the left, run by the one and only Samina Misra. She'll patch you up, if you've got the money. We don't run any free clinics up in here, you don't? Okay. This is our final stop. Over there, you've got the last Nova, where Bog serves watered-down drinks at ridiculously exorbitant prices. And right here, 
is the most important place on the entire station. The Reckoner's Corps, run by the incomparable Shinya Voss. Another new rook, Neva? I can't believe Delgado still lets you recruit, given what happened with the last one. You mean Austin Ray? It's been taken care of, all right? I don't like loose ends, and this rook is the one who tied it off. Perhaps next time you'll try to be a bit more discerning regarding your choices. It's far more cost-effective. Yeah, yeah, love you too, darling. Anyway, Shinya handles our lifeblood. The money. We call him our Reckoner, but if you ask me, he's actually a pain in the ass. And Neva will slit your throat if she thinks you'll bleed creds. Go to hell, boss. Take care of our new friend here, or I'll find a way to pull the pin on that little party popper in your chest. Anyway, Shinya will get you set up in our system. I've got real work to do. Once you're done, head upstairs and I'll introduce you to the boss. Time for a proper introduction. I am Shinya Voss, the official reckoner for the Crimson Fleet. And since Neva so thoughtfully mentioned it, yes, this is a bomb embedded in my chest. And no, I'll never know the meaning of the word humble. In fact, I find Delgado's idea of a security measure to be quite empowering. That's amusing. I don't think I've heard that one before. Oh wait, yes I have. You might as well dispense with all the stupid jokes. I've been hearing them for years. Since I oversee the bulk of transactions and maintain all accounts for the fleet, I'm a prime target for information. Should our enemies capture me or I grew any semblance of a moral conscience, you might consider me the greatest threat we have. For Delgado, the bomb grants peace of mind and a certain degree of safety. It's why he's the boss. Of course, I'm not the first Reckoner to bear a bomb under my ribcage, but Delgado was smart enough to continue the tradition. Now, let me get you set up. A moment while I convene with the core. Thanks to advanced modifications even Bugen would envy, I can interface directly with our mainframe and the Galbank network. This allows me to move and clean credits faster and more efficiently than any run-of-the-mill cyber runner. There. You're done. All you need now is Delgado's blessing, and you'll be one of us. Getting into the system is a piece of cake. Getting out? Not so much. Anyway, I need you to listen up. Thanks to our relations with contacts across the galaxy, we always have a steady stream of jobs available. I've granted you all the necessary permissions to access these listings at any time using the computers that surround the core. If Neva's chosen wisely, we certainly will. Now, I believe that covers all I have to say, so you can run along to Delgado. Take the elevator to the upper level. You should be able to find your way from there, I hope. Alright, listen up. You can all stop complaining. Atrium to cargo bay doors have been repaired. Oh, and you're welcome. Oh. Those credits ain't gonna steal ah, themselves. Ah, there are some other new recruits. So, now that we are all here, 
It's time to get down to business. The two of you are the only rooks that have made the latest cut. The rest, well, let's just say they won't be joining us ever again. Neva's willing to put her neck on the line and vouch for you, which means you've got what it takes to join the Crimson Fleet. If dealing with the Ragana was at the limit of your capabilities, then you have a serious problem on your hands. You are already in too deep to quit. And I can promise you, it only gets more difficult from here. All right, let's get started here. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, you're in it for the long haul. No one quits. No one retires. The only way out is death. You stay loyal or you pay the consequences. Fleet before friends. Fleet before family. Fleet before yourself. Hey, if you've got a problem, I can decorate that wall behind you with your brains. Room could use a little color if you ask me. It's all right, neighbor. I admire this Rook's backbone. Takes a lot of guts to crack jokes with the threat of death staring them in the face. Can we get on with this? I want to get drunk at the last Nova. I'm impressed. That is the first intelligent thing you have said this entire time, Mathis. Since you two seem so eager to move forward, let's get to your next job. Pack your cold weather gear, Rooks. Where we are going, you're going to need it. Oh, God, don't tell me you're dragging him down to Suvaral for another one of your little initiation runs. Ten Johns to the surface, twelve dead Rooks. You think by now you would have given up on that goddamn campfire story? Crix's legacy is no story, neighbor. We've got fresh eyes in the fleet, and if these two want to impress, they're going to help me search those ruins. I hope you're right, Dale. That new code we grabbed for the lot cost us a ton of credits. And a decent captain. This initiation, as Neva calls it, is your chance to see where it all began. On Suvorov with Jasper Griggs. Griggs led the riots that gave birth to the Crimson Fleet. And if his legacy is still out there, we're going to be the ones to find it. Of course. Where else could I find such a perfect location to weed out any rooks who'd be wasting the fleet's time? Through a bit of luck and a hell of a lot of cash, Neva was able to get her hands on an access code to the inside of the lock. This will be the first time someone from the Grinson fleet has set foot in there for... well... Since Griggs left the place behind. It has been frustrating being this close to potential clues, but not being able to find a way through those prison walls. Before Griggs left the fleet, he left a message talking about a major score. One that would set up the fleet to be a big player in the settled systems. Somewhere down the line, they started calling it Crix's Legacy. And everyone who's tried to find it has wound up empty-handed, missing, or dead. If we're gonna beat those odds, we'll first need a lead. And I would wager we will find one on Suvorov. Dale's leaving out the best part. That this whole search is based on a handful of words on a very old slate. Crix left a lot of big talk on that recording. And not a lot of facts. Some of us believe in it more than others. <laughs> Don't listen to her. When we get our hands on Crix's legacy, the fleet will be operating at a completely different level. We will become more than a match for you, Cis's death. You forget the UC is still licking its wounds from the colony wars. They don't have the capability to mount a full-scale assault. 
And if they were foolish enough to attack, we would have the manpower to push those pendejos right back to Jemison. If we have Grix's legacy. Exactly. Now you're beginning to understand. Okay, enough discussion. We have got a lot of work to do. To that end, the next stop is the lock. I've had Jazz feed the coordinates into your ship's computer. Since Mathis doesn't have a ship, he's going to ride with me. I'll see you down there, Rook. Don't keep me waiting. I could tell you stories that would last for hours. But now is not the time. You have a job to do, and I don't like to be kept waiting. When you... Well, if you get back to the key. I am sure you can find some copies of the interview he gave to SSNN around here. Clamor. I think those recordings might give you the history lesson that you are looking for. Yeah, yeah, what is it? The UC built the lock as a supermax prison a little under... Well, it must have been at least a hundred years ago. Before that, those Concha Jesus Padres marooned prisoners on the planet's surface and left them to their own devices. As you can imagine, these turned into some kind of... demented survival of the fittest. Prisoners killing each other for a chance at the meager supplies. Luckily, some whistleblowers back in New Atlantis saw this as cruel and unusual punishment and pressured the UC into building the facility. Five years after the prison was completed, Crix touched off the riots that overran the lock and eventually the key. There is no deal. You and Mathis are two sides of the same coin. A couple of rooks fighting for a spot in the fleet. Only problem is that he is down a ship, and you are not, which puts you ahead. Just barely. Who knows? Maybe he'll get lucky, and you won't make it off sewer off in one piece. It's cold. Bitter cold. Just about the last place you would want to find yourself without heat. The few living things that can survive the extreme temperatures are constantly fighting to stay at the top of the food chain. The Crimson Fleet called Suvorov the white hell. To me, it's paradise. Someone up here pisses me off enough, I send them down to the surface for a little overnight visit. Snaps them right back into line. you got here. I told you you were wasting your time, Del. Yeah? We will see. And Mathis, I am running things around here, so keep your mouth shut. You got that? <laughs> Fine. All right. Listen up, because I am only going to go through this once. We are here to dig up any info about Grix's legacy. We are not here to scrap for loot. Whatever you pick up, don't think, don't get creative, bring it straight to me. Oh, I don't know. I was really hoping for a huge sign on the wall saying, Crix's legacy clues here. Do I have to spell everything out? Look for data slates, notes, terminal entries? If you wrote a poem on a piece of toilet paper, I want it. It's so simple, even a rook like you can't screw it up. Hold on, no scrapping. How the hell am I supposed to make money around here? All right, that's enough. If either of you want to fly with the Crimson Fleet, then you need to follow one simple rule. 
When you're on a job, you do exactly what I say. No questions asked. If that doesn't work for you, just say so, and I will leave you on this ice bar without a ship. You will be dead within hours. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and there's one more thing. Your little friend can tag along until we get to the outer doors of the prison, but I will be damned if I'm letting them inside. Oh, very nice. I'll just remain here and soak in the planet's lovely winter-like atmosphere until I go hypothermic. We have a lot of ground to cover between the landing area and the lock, so let's get moving. You've got something for me? Here we are. The place where Jasper Griggs laid the groundwork for finding the legacy, and eventually, the Crimson Fleet. The Lock. Around five years. Rumor says he started planning his escape the moment that he arrived. Yeah. He needs to get this thing open, like, right now. It's freezing out here. Then crank up your suit heat, Mathis, because it's probably not going to get much better once we are inside. All right, let's keep moving. Standing out here isn't doing us any good. This ID card cost a small fortune. Let's hope it pays off. First time I have been inside this part of the lock, so keep your eyes open. See anything unusual? Call it out. If it's hostile, take it down. Good reason. How many people did the UC stick down here, Dal? A couple of hundred at least. Might not look like much, but it was better than trying to survive on the surface. Not much better. Even with the heating on, this place looks like a goddamn dump. Now you know why the prisoners got fed up and looked to Cricks to lead them out of here. And that's how the Crimson Fleet began. Yeah, yeah, we've all heard the story. It's not a story, Mathis. It's history. Remember that. Now, keep your mouth shut. crawling all over the place. Yeah, and their bodies probably heard us firing from about a kilometer away. Hallelujah. If we weren't on this job with Delgado, I'd drop you for saying that. Enough already! I should have known better than to bring both of you at the same time. Now let's see. Looks like we are inside some sort of prisoner transfer area, but everything is locked down tight. Since you are such good friends, why don't you and Mathis head up to that control room and see if you can get some more of these doors open? There's no way. 
way we're getting through it. Well, this is just great. The hell are we supposed to do now? What's there to think about? Let's face it, we're on our own now. You think he rigged that collapse on purpose? No. No way. I get that we're down here trying to prove ourselves. But I don't think this is what Delgado had in mind. Why? Because that's what his loyal little soldiers are supposed to do? The hell with that. I have a better plan. We use this opportunity to take out Delgado, and at the same time, make some serious credits for ourselves. Whoa, whoa, hang on. G g give me a second to explain. Let's pretend for a second Delgado's correct. And there's information here about Crix's legacy. Once we get rid of him, we'll dig up the garbage ourselves and sell whatever we find to Neva. We'll be rolling in credits. No, 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 no way. Listen to me. We're going to be handing Neva leadership of the Crimson Fleet on a platter. She'll be thanking us for getting rid of Delgado. I mean, come on. I'll bet you a month's share that he's never been this vulnerable. It's perfect. Playing it safe, huh? I can respect that. But you better have me back when I make me move. Now, let's find a way out of here. Look at this dump. I guess that's one way through. I swear, I am never putting ice in me drinks. Lockdown mode has been rescinded. This place is starting to get to me.
Martha, have you thought about what I've said? Well, maybe we won't have to. You saw it back there. Those things, whatever they were, they've probably ripped him to shreds by now. Did the job for us. And if they haven't, we can still handle the job. We just have to get our hands a little dirty. Wouldn't be the first time, am I right? You didn't see. Those aliens were tearing through them like tissue paper. It'd be a miracle if any of them were alive. Saved us a hell of a lot of trouble. You've got a point. All right, I'll follow your lead for now. So, now that we've made it to the guard tower, what's our next move, genius? Keep doing what we've been doing. Right. <laughs> Glad I asked. I suppose we should start off by searching the tower for the location of Crix's cell. If he stashed any useful information, it might still be hidden somewhere inside. Cell D03118. Okay. It's a place to start, I guess. Delgado was right. Crix must have hit the Galbank transport. Right. This 
just gets us one step closer to that fortune that went down with the legacy. You report any of this to the guards. Well, you know what will happen. Can't believe this is where the fleet started. It's history, man. Place out. Well, well, what do we have here? Uh, give me a sec. This ought to come in handy. You see, he must have burned some serious cash. <laughs> Bullshit, Delgado. I help plenty. Is that Mathis? Tell him to shut up. I will deal with him later. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Now all we have to do is find a way off of this planet. Um, let me see. Ah, here we go. I'm looking at schematics for the lock. And I don't think there's a way to get you back to the surface from there. But I can open the outer doors to the shuttle bay and let you fly one of the shuttles down there directly up to the key. Don't worry about your ship. I will send some people down to get it. You just get your ass on that shuttle and get out of here. Yeah, sure, and I wish gold coins would start raining from the sky. Now, if wishing time is over, maybe you'd be kind enough to stop running your mouth and listen for a change. Okay, let me see. One of these probably opens the door. Shuttle bay activated. Initiating the unknown process. Please stand by. Yup, it's got it. Might take a while, though. Those bay doors have not been opened in almost a century. You have done a hell of a job, Rook. We will talk when you get back to the key. Why the hell did you lie to Delgado about me? You didn't do all this work alone. Hey, come on. 
I was just looking out for both of us. I could have caught you out of the deal, but I didn't, right? Look, um, about all that killing Delgado stuff, why don't we just forget about everything that I said? You know, like it never happened. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> I promise that you won't regret it. Now, let's get the heck out of here. Exposed wires here, a little rust there. What a unique way to decorate. There you are. The hell took you so long? It's about time. I was about to fly down and loot your bodies. Not now, neighbor. Well, you said you found something. Hand it over. That's it? Just one slate. After losing so much of our crew, it better be a map with a big red X on it. Well, I'll be damned. Legacy wasn't referring to Crix's fortune. It's the name of an actual ship. A Galbank transport probably loaded with credits. Never heard any stories about a Galbank ship going down. And even if it had happened, it would have been picked clean years ago. No, neighbor. Think. If Galbank covered it up, and over time, the location was eventually forgotten, it wouldn't be on anyone's radar. Okay. This changes things. Now that we know what we are looking for, we have to narrow the search. I'm sure he did not have a choice. People would kill to get a crack at a score this big. I know I have. Let us start with what we know. It was a Galbank ship, which means the company is going to have records of where it went down. Neva, weren't you working on a deal with Rokov? Something about a big wig charity event on one of Trident Starliners? Are you serious? I've been working on that gig for three months. That's my score. Ay, Dios mío. Will you shut up about your score and think for a second? That Starliner has a Galbank VIP suite aboard. Which means... Come on, Neva. This isn't hard. Which means a Galbank exec will be aboard. We grab their credentials and get ourselves into the Galbank archives in New Atlantis. Holy shit, that might actually work. I'll send a message to Rokov right away. Pack your bags, Rook. You're going on vacation. And since you've earned it, take this gun with you. Might come in handy when Rokov screws everything up as usual.
Rokoff is... <laughs> well, he's Rokoff. A real pain in the ass. He used to run with the fleet until we kicked him out. Lately, he has been using his long-hauling skills to captain a Starliner for Trident. Gives us a contact within the company. He has been trying to get his foot back in the door with us for years. But I'm not ready to let him in just yet. Maybe you can use that to your advantage. Good, because that is exactly what you are going to be doing. Neva and I are too well known to walk around the Starliner without being recognized. If Trident Security spotted us, it'd be over. I need you to board that ship, make contact with Rokoff, and get me those credentials. You know what? I'm gonna leave that entirely up to you. If you think he's come through for us, you can promise him he'll get paid. But if he gets in your way, then you take him out. You'd better. Oh, before you leave, I wanted you to know that I took what you said about Mathis into consideration, and I've decided to cut him from the fleet. Honestly, I'm surprised he made it off Suvorov in one piece. Because you're the one that finished the job. You followed orders, and you put your neck on the block to get that data to the key. As far as Mathis goes, I'm sure you had to drag him through the lock and prevent him from doing something as stupid. We'll see. That's it then. Next stop for you is Rock of Starliner, the Siren of the Stars. And remember, Rockoff does not need to know anything about Griggs' legacy. For now, it's just between us. Now get out of here. Hey, Rook. Before you head out, I need to have a word with you. Meet me at the last Nova after you wrap things up with Matt. Hell of a job you did down there, Rook. Hell of a job. The fleet is family. Stealing from each other is just what you call... Hey, I want to talk to you. Thanks to you, Delgado's cut me from the fleet. Well, you know what? You better get your own fleet, because I'm coming after you. Yeah? Well, then it just cost you big time, because now you're a walking corpse. You just don't know it yet. Threaten us all you want, Mathis. You did this to yourself. Now get the hell out of me way! Well, isn't this cozy? It appears we've stumbled across the embodiment of the phrase absolute mayhem. Better get a move on before Dale sees you slacking. There you are. All right, look. I've been lining up a score with that asshole Rokoff on the Siren of the Stars for months. I'm not about to let a payday slip through my fingers. So guess what? You're gonna finish the job for me. Seems to me, instead of trawling deep space... I'm about to tell you, so shut up and listen. Rokov's been tipping me off about some kind of bullshit charity event that the Siren of the Stars is hosting. At the event, they're gonna give away something called Earth Savior Award, which is worth tens of thousands of credits. So it's simple. While you're on the siren, swiping those Galbait credentials, I want you to grab that award and bring it to me. No, Dombrowski's only aboard to use the Galbank VIP suite so he can catch a free ride at the company's expense. I'm sure he'll be there partying with the other spoiled brats. I guarantee he doesn't give a crap about what's going on at the event.
and I'd prefer to have the money that award's worth in my account. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. Look, you can make all the jokes and excuses you want, but if you don't come back with the ES award, I'm gonna deduct it from your pay. Either way, I get my money. How much you walk away with is in your own hands. Got it? Unless you plan to walk away empty-handed, she really isn't giving us a choice. Then it's settled. Good. All right, Rook, we're done here. Now, get your ass to the siren and bring me my goods. Because that's exactly what you are. A rookie, a newbie, fresh me. Beneath all of that inexperience, I'm sure you have an actual name. But honestly, no one gives a damn. So get used to hearing that word. Until you earn your stripes, you're a rook to everyone in the fleet. Hit me up if you got questions. Captain, do you require my... United Colony System Defense at your service. You boarded the key. I can't imagine what state the pirates have left. Yo, back. So how did it go? Frankly, it's because we've never gotten this far before. The last agent I sent to infiltrate the Crimson Fleet ended up in a morgue on New Atlantis. Then things are moving forward. Perfect. Nice job, Rook. I was certain we'd fool Delgado, but never. She's a sharp one. Overcoming her scrutiny is no small matter. Did you discover anything worth reporting yet? Legacy. Why does that sound familiar? Wait a moment. Are you telling me Delgado may have actually located Crix's legacy? Excuse me, Commander. Did you say Crix's legacy? Please tell me you aren't seriously going to give that any credence. Everyone knows that's just a... I don't know, a myth? I'm holding tangible confirmation of the word legacy attached to Crix's name. That's too much of a coincidence to attribute to myth. I suppose it's possible, sir. Intelligence picked up a bit of chatter on that subject recently. We assumed it was some sort of tall tale or a story to attract recruits to their cause. Well, let's find out if Delgado is chasing ghosts, or he's smarter than we suspect. Let me see what we have here. Nope. There are no records of a gal bank transport named the Legacy in the database. <laughs> I think Delgado's trying to manipulate you. What do you think, sir? I think there's no record because Galbank is hiding something. Delgado's no fool. If he risked his own neck to get that information, then he must be on to something. We have to take this seriously. What's your next move? Clever, Delgado. Very clever. If I were in your place, I'd be trying to do the exact same thing. We can't let Delgado get his hands on what could potentially turn out to be the largest haul of credits the Crimson Fleet's ever seen. Maybe I should head out to New Atlantis, sir. I could press the Galbank execs for information. Get ahead of everything. No. Let's allow this to run its course. We have our agent here feeding us information. I think that's good enough for now. There's more to this than just finding the location of the transport. Jasper Griggs was clever. For some reason, he never got there.
because the Crimson Fleet would be a totally different adversary and Crix wouldn't have disappeared years ago. Even if they hid the money with that damn human computer Shinya Voss, our forensic accounting people would have found that data. No, the Crimson Fleet are in dire shape right now. They haven't seen that much currency, well, ever. It's imperative that you do. If the Crimson Fleet gets its hands on a transport full of currency, it would be disastrous for the settled systems. I need you to do whatever you can to bring us more information. And for God's sake, don't kill anyone on that Starliner. You're both dismissed. Right, let's get this crate into space. About time you showed up. All right, I want to know what's going on. I've been trying to get Delgado's attention for, oh, I don't know, three years now. And what do I get? Nothing but radio silence. Then out of nowhere, just when Neva and I are closing in on a huge score of our own, Delgado orders me to help you out. Because the only way to achieve a win is by agreeing to play the game in the first place. Worst case scenario, I don't make the fleet, but I end up a couple thousand credits richer. That's almost a win-win, a don't you think? Happy. Oh, I'm thrilled. Still, this leaves me with a lot of unknowns. And in our line of work, unknowns get you killed. So Neva's message said you were here for Dombrowski. Was that all she sent you here to do? Or was there something else you were sent here to steal? Don't play games with me. We both know pinging a message back and forth to the key is going to take longer than we have to do this job. We're supposed to be working together on every part of this. So, you're gonna tell me what else you're here for or not? Oh, really? Did she now? I can't believe she's trying to cut me out of this deal. Without me, the award never would have ended up here in the first place. She told you to hold that over my head, did she? Oh, that witch. Fine, I'll help. But you're doing all the legwork, and I'm still taking my cut of the payout. Anyway, we'll get to that later. First, we have a much bigger fish to fry. So why are you targeting a Gall Bank exec anyway? Not exactly your average Crimson Fleet prey. Why the interest? Oh, I see. We're playing this game now. Fine, fine. Well, you might as well turn around and hop back aboard your ship because you're not getting near Dombrowski without my help. Like him or not, he's the Siren's captain, so his assistance is going to be invaluable. Maybe we should hear what he has to say.
Well, well, it appears we have a mind reader here. You're absolutely right. I don't want money. I want back into the Crimson Fleet. It's as simple as that. That's a disturbing way to put it. But I suppose that's the best offer I'm gonna get, so I'll take it. Dombrowski's a full-timer aboard the Siren of the Stars. Probably spends more time cruising the space lanes than actually working. Fortunately, the Siren is hosting the Tehran Preservation Society charity gala. Larry won't be able to resist showing off his VIP clout. To get what you need, you're gonna have to attend the gala, talk to his fellow philanthropists, and dig up some dirt. Oh god. I'd rather hunt down Varun's zealots than mingle with those egotistical frauds. The event's a complete sham. Bunch of rich snobs getting together and throwing a party for themselves. These people couldn't give a damn about Tehran Preservation or any other charity for that matter. Yeah, well, lucky for you, it's not black tie, so you'll be fine. This card will allow you to access the Starview Ballroom. If you need my help, I'll be relaxing in one of the upper level lounges. Head inside and mingle with the crowd. No one likes Dombrowski, so they'll be more than happy to share his dirty secrets. He's a VIP executive, which means he either worked really, really hard using blood, sweat, and tears to make the arduous climb to the top, or he backstabbed, lied, cheated, and betrayed his way up the corporate ladder. From what I've heard, it's the second option. Well, you better learn quick. Oh, there's one last thing. Dryden equips all of their Starliners with the latest acoustic threat detection. Meaning that you lose patience and kill anyone aboard the ship, security will be alerted and all hell will break loose. Anyway, I suppose that's enough to get you started. Good luck. As long as you remember that I'm getting paid my cut, I'll help you with anything you want. What's the status of your plan? Okay, then let me point you to the person in charge of the award. Her name's Sheila Holbrook, and you can probably find her in the Starview Ballroom. I'd press her to reveal where the award's hidden, and we can go from there. And if you're thinking of pulling the trigger on poor Miss Holbrook, remember that any gunfire is going to set off the ship's alarms. They claim their goal is to celebrate the soul of the Earth, the culture, the people, and the ideals of the past. In their minds, Earth is now dead which is why they feel that preservation of its remaining aspects is so important. In reality, this is what happens when folks with far too much time and far too much money get together to make themselves feel like they're contributing to society. Oh, and while you're at the gala, avoid the canopies. They're frozen, not fresh. Trident must have spent a fortune at the I'm 
sorry, but unless you're reporting a security situation, I need to get back. Quite a lovely Starliner. Nothing but the best for the society, eh? Have you tried the canopies? Yes. Awarded. I'm extremely busy preparing for the award ceremony, so this better be important. Probably in a few days. I don't want the award transfer to actually occur until we're safely in orbit at our destination. Of course, if I keep getting interrupted, the ceremony might never take place at all. Yes, I am. Actually, I've been entrusted with the transfer of the award for the last seven of its nine years. Why do you ask? Forget it. I refuse to have a repeat of last year's fiasco, where the name leaked early and started a common brawl. The winner's name is safely sealed away with the award itself, inside the master safe located at the purser's office. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have much more important things on my agenda than to speak to the likes of you. The ship's purser can assist you with any... With all the worthy causes and the settled systems, oh, you'd think people wouldn't waste money on these precious luxuries. On behalf of Trident Luxury Lines, I'd like to welcome you aboard. Welcome to the purser's office. I'm Chief Purser Murata. How can I be of assistance today? An excellent question. My responsibilities include all of the Siren's financial, customs, and commercial goods transfers. Honestly, I really enjoy the work. I get to meet people at every port of call instead of being constantly stuck below decks. Oh, absolutely! The safe is magnetically sealed and shielded with multiple layers of fully damage-resistant, vacuum-proof plating. In the unlikely event our vessel is boarded and the threat detection alarm is triggered, the safe will be permanently sealed until it reaches port. In the even more unlikely event this ship is destroyed, we can assure you that your loved ones will be able to recover your goods from the wreckage. So, as you can imagine, your property will be completely secure until you decide to retrieve them from our safe. I've only seen it briefly myself, but I can assure you that it's quite lovely. Unfortunately, the item is locked inside of our safe, which can only be accessed by presenting an appropriate claim ID. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? Well, if you change your mind, I'll be here. Have a wonderful trip. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to make your stay more comfortable. Remember to return to your cabin in a quiet and orderly fashion. Must you continue these unwelcome interruptions? I'm a very busy woman. Excuse me? And why in goodness name would I do something as foolish as that? And why, in goodness name, would I possibly agree to that ridiculous demand? I mean, it might be okay. Nice try, but no. Don't get bent out of shape. Oh, just take the damn thing already. Listen, maybe you can keep this between us. If the award goes missing, there's no need for the insurance company to get involved. I've done this regular cruise run several times, and I can assure you that the route is quite safe. 
So, what brings you aboard? Please remember to obey all... Yeah, uh, can we do this later? I'm busy. An open bar would have been nice. Trident's gouging us for every credit we've got. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I certainly hope they decide to hold all future society events aboard the star by me. The society chair has really outdone herself this time. Here for business or pleasure? Hello. Are you a member of the society? That view is absolutely spectacular, isn't it? When you join, they send you a small chunk of rock from the Earth itself. I keep mine on my desk. Let's put it this way. He screwed over so many people, if he suddenly disappeared from the universe, I don't think anyone would miss him. Nice to have met you. Quite a lovely Starliner. Nothing but the best for the society, huh? Hello. Are you a member? Letty has an A-level executive rating over at Galbank, which means he has access to everyone's accounts at the touch of a button. Don't forget to donate to the cause. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Larry likes to drop overly complex words into conversations. I'm sure he knows that it annoys people, but he does it anyway. Hmm. Well, that was boring. That view is absolutely spectacular. I isn't certainly it? hope they decide to hold all. I heard he uses Galbing's VIP suite on the Siren of the Stars almost monthly. Does the man do any real work? Enjoy the rest of the event. Have you tried the canapes? Horrid. Post. The considerable amounts of cash that Dombrowski donates is the only reason we allow him to attend society functions. That's all then? Okay. Please remain in designated passenger areas at all times. Have a safe journey. So, what brings you aboard? The society chair is real. Could we talk about something else? Nice to have met you. An open bar would have been nice, but Trident's gouging us for every credit we've got. Here for business or pleasure? He's been spending a lot of time with Claudia Swist. Quality time, if you catch my meaning? I'm certain his wife doesn't know a thing about it. That's all then? Okay. So? Sorry, do I know you? Okay, wait, are you seriously... Uh, are you trying to pick me up? Look, uh, I appreciate the compliment, but I'm already seeing someone. And my partner doesn't like competition. He gets very jealous. His wife? Uh, oh, for the love of God. I told Larry to keep his big mouth shut, but did he listen? No. He had to impress his friends and treat me like a trophy. Look, I've been in this business for a long time, and I know how this game works, so let's skip all the banter and get it over with. What's it gonna take to make us both happy? You're willing to pay me to give you dirt on Larry? <laughs> Sorry, I... I thought I'd end up on the short end of the deal. You know, this whole thing really pisses me off. Larry and I had the perfect scheme where thousands of credits all worked out, and then he goes and flushes the whole thing down the toilet. If you're angry at anybody, it should be yourself for getting mixed up in this ridiculous scheme in the first place. Judge me all you want, lady. At this point, if I'm going down, then all I'm focused on is dragging Larry down with me.
I didn't know who the hell you were. For all I knew, you were working for Dombrowski. It's called playing it cool. You should try it sometime. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting to that. Larry got together with myself and this other guy, Gabriel Vera. He's some big wig over at UC Security. I doctored the transactions, Larry wiped them off the system, and Vera kept the legal pressure off of us. We were scamming Galbank for months. It was going well until I discovered Larry was cheating everyone by changing each transaction in his favor before deleting them. I wish I had some. Maybe you should try talking to Gabriel Vera. He should be around here somewhere. If he doesn't want to cooperate, just mention my name. That should grab his attention. Good luck. You're gonna need it. I wrote a computer algorithm that basically creates a randomized number of false ghost credits that mimic the crypto key of actual credits. Then the algorithm simply passes the ghost credits to whatever legit transfers that the bank transacts. The genuine credits enter a dummy account. The best part is that I also alter the crypto keys as the real cash flows into our accounts. By the time it lands in our pockets, the credits are clean. So, on paper, it appears that all of the bank's transactions are covered, when it's really just our ghosted dummy creds. <laughs> Genius, right? I hope you hurt Dombrowski. Nail his ass right to the wall. Have access. The Hello. You here for the charity event? Dombrowski. Uh, he's the exec holding court over in the VIP area of the ballroom. Yeah, sorry. I work for UC Security, not Galbank. I don't really know him personally. Claudia sent you, did she? Look, friend, I don't know if you're just a little drunk, maybe a touch crazy, or both. Whatever you think you know about me, you're dead wrong. So back off. You're a liar and an absolute disgrace to the United Colonies. Don't test me. You have no idea how high up the chain I am with UC security. Not only can I make you disappear, I can also make sure the settled systems forget you existed in the first place. <laughs> Just in case you weren't aware, I am the authorities. Anything you try to report will boil down to your word against mine. And since I work for UC security, who do you think people will believe? An open bar would have been nice, but Triton's gouging us for now. I saw your little exchange with Vera. Keep that up and I guarantee that Imbecile's gonna demand that you be arrested. Which is why he's threatening you. That makes sense. We need hard evidence of their scheme. It's gonna be tricky. The problem is he's not gonna talk to you in public. We need to get Vera isolated so he'll spill everything he knows. Maybe. But if something goes wrong, he's able to raise an alarm or sunk. With all of these wealthy patrons aboard, the ship is crawling with security. Smart. If there's an emergency, standard practice is for all passengers to clear the decks and report to their cabins for lockdown. I think the best chance we have would be to tamper with the life support sensors. Manipulate a few controls and you can fool the monitoring system into thinking there's a, a life support failure. And there you have your emergency.
This is one of Trident's premier Starliners. That means it has the best of everything. Including a triple redundancy life support system. They installed a backup for the backup. Luckily for us, it will still trip an emergency and everyone will have to return to their quarters until I sound the all clear. Which I won't. Yes, exactly. We shouldn't go near that system. If anything goes wrong, we could kill everyone aboard. You don't need to know anything about the system. All you need to do is access the maintenance area and throw some switches. One more thing. If Chief Engineer Sandin gives you any trouble, tell him I'll erase that gambling debt he owes me. I prefer you use that as a last resort, but hey, what's the harm in losing a few credits when I'm on the brink of rejoining the fleet, right? Anyway, I better start backing. Things are getting hot around here, and won't be long before Trident figures out you had help. There's access to the crew section that you can reach through the uh, Starview Ballroom. Chief Sundin should be there, wasting time at the station as usual. Have fun with that guy, he's a, a real piece of work. Once you're past Sundin, just look for the room marked Environmental Control. Everything you need is inside. On the surface, he's an upstanding citizen of the United Colonies, pretty high up in UC security. Lots of clout with mast. Underneath, he's a greedy piece of garbage. Given the chance, he'd backstab you for a cred stick and pin the murder on someone else. Come to think of it, if he wasn't such a petty tyrant, he'd probably thrive with the Crimson Fleet. All passengers are instructed to immediately report to their cabins. That way we keep the halls clear and avoid a panic. Fortunately for us, all of the passenger cabin doors will automatically unlock. This is normally to ensure the crew can check cabins quickly and without interference. But in our case, it's like having an all-access pass. Get back to it. There's some heavy security protecting this area, but judging from the fact that this is the life support control, it certainly makes sense. Uh, hey, uh, uh, hold up. This area is off limits to passengers. Wait a second, you're Captain Rokov's guest, right? Didn't expect to see you down here. Sorry to give you trouble. What can I do for you? Yeah, a little. A few of the techs call this deck the dungeon. <laughs> I think you can see why. Not exactly Starliner class comfort down here. Don't get me wrong, the quiet gives me time to gather my thoughts, catch up on work and all that, but I'd rather work on the bridge. Oh, uh, sorry, that area's off limits. No exceptions. No, sorry, I'm afraid it's impossible. Trident regulations strictly prohibit anyone from entering the life support area without a valid reason. Look, I'm not trying to be a jerk here, it's just that I could lose my job, you know? Hey, if your heart's set on it, who am I to stop you from staring at a bunch of life support machinery? Tell you what, I'm just going to step out for a bit and stretch my legs. Maybe you can hold this for me while I'm away? Whatever you do, don't break anything, or I'll be out of the job.
May I have your attention, please? The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion, and remain there until you receive further instructions. Well, it appears that we've definitely ruined the party. Everyone's gone. Can you believe the size of this cabin? It's large enough to accommodate a family of 12. I was wondering if you were the cause what of this ship-wide emergency. It's time you stop playing games and tell me why you're here. You're working for Ikande's little anti-pirating outfit? So what? I have nothing to do with the Crimson Fleet. And even if I suddenly decided to stay loyal to the old UC, why would I possibly want to incriminate myself by handing over evidence? Claudia said that. You sure? Damn it! That means my money's already gone. And Dombrowski's going to walk away with a fortune. I'd love to see the bastard fry. If I give you that information and it falls into the wrong hands, I could end up in jail. At least I walk away with something. All right. You have yourself a deal. Here, with this slate and this recording to tie it all together, you'll be able to nail his ass to the wall. He'll do whatever you want. Just remember that you promised to leave me out of it. You better tell Dombrowski to run, because if you don't kill him, I will. Well, well. You must be the one who's been accosting Claudia and Gabriel. I'm uncertain what you hope to accomplish here, but it appears we should rapidly enter into some sort of negotiation. Excellent, excellent. So, before we begin, let's review the facts. First, it's clear that you've obtained insider knowledge of my arrangement to defraud Galvan. The means and the method, perhaps, but not the motive. And second, I'm going to hypothesize that my compatriots are despondent regarding their share and have assisted you with this endeavor, hmm? Since we're speaking and I'm not at the reporting end of a bullet, this leads me to conclude that you desire something personal from me. I see. Well, that certainly places a damper on our negotiations. Perhaps I can hasten my diatribe to temper your violence-ridden contribution. In blunt terms, you have compromising materials about me in your possession. The only thing I have to offer in return are my Gal Bank credentials. I assume that's what you've been angling for all along? Oh, do get on with this. There's only so long I can stand being in the presence of this pig. Well, I'm surprised you even posed that question at all. The answer is quite obvious. The last thing I'd want to do at this point is call attention to myself. Splendid. It appears we've reached an accord. Wait, I'm sorry. Let me simplify that for you. It sounds like we have a deal. All passengers. May I oh, have of course I trust please. you'll understand if I ask for the us to avoid any further contact. Emergency. Now, please if you'll excuse me, I need to formulate how I'm going to utterly ruin to two very annoying business associates. Good day. This ship is in a state of emergency. Well, looks like everything worked out. Just like we planned. I'm glad you feel that way. 
Just remember to tell Delgado how much I pitched into hell. You know, I'm still wondering exactly what you needed those credentials for. You feel like telling me, partner? Ah, so he told you to keep it from me. I see. I wouldn't want you to risk your position with the fleet like I did, so I'll just leave it alone. Anyway, I suppose there's nothing stopping me from rejoining the fleet now. It's been a long time coming. I owe you one, Dover Beach. Don't worry, it's not an insult. It's a very old Russian word for comrade. It's what I intend to call you from now on, so get used to it. Nonsense. If there's one universal constant you can depend on, it's that Yevgeny Rokov always makes All good on his team. Always. May I have your attention, please? Well, I suppose the this is where we part company. Hopefully the next time we meet, we'll be aboard. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive... Hello. Welcome to the... <clears throat> the uh, Galbank Archives. May I see your credentials, please? Oh, no. None at all. I'm all alone down here. Yeah, yep. Completely by myself. Well, I, I guess you're down here too, right? So, <laughs> that's two of us now. Sorry, not trying to lie to you or anything. Just, uh... Yeah. Oh. Uh, no. No, this is just their deep storage facility. All the current records are upstairs in the main facility. This is where, uh, where they put the older data onto long-term servers. Just one moment while I verify. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Dombrowski. Welcome, sir. Give me a moment to log your visit and then I'll unseal the archives. Me? No. Look, this is my first day on the job. Just cut me some slack, okay? I can't afford to lose it. I got a wife and kids to feed. Everything checks out. Give me a moment to log your visit, and then I'll unseal the archives. There we go. Have a wonderful day. Buddy Rokoff is aboard the key. Told me everything that happened. Yeah, he won't shut up about you. Keeps going on and on. <laughs> now I remember why we kicked his ass out the fleet. Yeah, that be a first. All right, neighbor, you've made your point. Well, since you're vouching for Rokoff, I guess we can give him another chance. All right. Now that is out of the way, we can move on to the matter at hand. Crix's legacy. Speaking of which, let me see that data you copied from the Galbank archives. Ah, so the Galbank transport went down over Bannock 4. Bannock. Why does that sound familiar? Neva? Yeah, yeah, keep your panties on. I'm looking it up. And... 
Bannock 4. Let's see. Damn it. Bannock 4 is an EM class gas giant. We can't even get a ship near the thing without frying every circuit aboard. EM class? <sighs> Impossible. There isn't a ship in operation that can navigate that type of interference. Don't know that one, huh? Well, pick up your pencil. There's gonna be a test on this later. EM class means the planet is given off a ridiculously high amount of electromagnetic radiation. We're talking off the charts here. Fly your ship anywhere near one of these death traps and you'll blow every single circuit on your ship. You'd be dead in space. Get it? I just said the place is EM class. But hey, if you want to commit suicide, please go ahead and jump there. Don't let me stop you. Both of you shut up and think for a second. I'm sure Creeks hit the same roadblock. All we need to do is figure out how he got around it. This sounds like a goddamn waste of time to me. No, no, this all makes sense. The data says the transport went down over Bannock 4, carrying currency during the Narian War. There were ships fighting across the entire galaxy back then. It's not that hard to believe this one got lost that far out from home. That's the spirit, Rook. That is the essence of the Crimson Fleet that has been slipping away lately. Neva, the Galbank data says the transport had a CBR-27 transponder. Can we track that kind of thing? Pinpoint its exact location? That transponder is military grade. We're talking ultra-bit encryption, constantly reshuffling frequencies. We don't have shit like that laying around. But, before you get that pissy look on your face, I heard that the UC's been working on a ship signal decryption system called the Comm Spike. We grab that little beauty, and we'll be able to track anything you want. All right, here is the plan, so shut up and listen. Rook, I want you and Neva to put your heads together and get us that comm spike. I don't care if it's mounted at the top of mast. I want it. In the meantime, I'm going to find out more about this EM class gas giant problem. And I think I know just who to ask. Give me a little time to crunch the numbers on the comm spike with Jazz, and I'll point us in the right direction. I promise? You gonna write that in your diary, little girl? All right, that is enough. We are in arm's reach of Crix's legacy, and I don't have time to deal with this kind of bullshit. Now, both of you, get the hell out of here and get to work! All right. Let's get this over with. Follow me. You wanna kick back? Avoid the last Nova. Bog's in the funk. That'd kill any mood. All right, let's get right to it. Did you get the Earth Savior Award, or am I gonna be very disappointed? Well, that's because you'd be absolutely right. You see, everyone above you in the fleet is making more than you are off the same gig. That's why we're all fighting our way to the top. Understood? Good. Now, you might want to hand over that award before I have you tossed off the key. Just a thought. Well, well. Look at that. You followed my directions, and now you're gonna end up with some credits in your pocket. Of course, it would have been more money if you hadn't blabbed about the damn thing to roll call. But that's on you. 
Anyway, here's your cash. Keep this up and I might even start respecting you. All right, fleet. We've all got work to do, so let's get to it. Howdy. So I heard there was a bit of excitement on the Siren of the Stars. Your handiwork, I assume? We told you we'd be keeping tabs on you. So, did you get information for us or not? Yes, and I heard there were no casualties. Excellent work. Except for the ecliptic hit squad that you took down at the Archives. You're taking care of that mess, by the way. Speaking of which, I assume you copied the information from the Galbank's computers. Let me see what you got. So the legacy went down at Bannock 4. Bannock 4. Hmm. Why does that sound familiar, Doft? Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant, sir. There isn't a ship in the fleet that could safely get near that type of world. It sounds like you admire that lunatic. I think his gospel's gone straight to your head. Maybe we made a mistake choosing you for this assignment. That's enough, Lieutenant. Even if Delgado has an immediate solution to the EM problem, there's still the matter of tracing the Legacy's transponder signal. They have information about the comm spike? <sighs> Damn it. I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that device, sir. No, you shouldn't be familiar with it. It's a highly classified project. It's an advanced signal decryption and tracking device that the UC Navy's been working on for years. How the hell did the Crimson Fleet find out about that? There must be an information leak somewhere, sir. It's the only thing that makes sense. I'll see what I can find out. Fine. This is what we're going to do. You keep playing along and go after the comm spike. Lieutenant Toft and I will see what we can find out about Bannock 4. Perfect. Just stick with the plan and we'll see who gets to Krix's legacy first. Alright, Jazz. What do you got? According to the latest, the comm spike is being developed at UC Star Station SY920. Location undisclosed. Fantastic. So how do we disclose it? We could lean on your smuggling contact. Call in that favor. You know who I mean. Our friend on Jimson. Nice one, Jazz. I'll make the arrangements. All right, Rook. Next stop, New Atlantis. Your connection is Juan Dayu. She's got most of the premium UC smuggling routes locked down tight. If you don't piss her off, she should be able to sneak you past SY920's security. Just remember to count your fingers after you shake hands with her. Don't worry. We know how to deal with her type. I sure hope so. She might be our only crack at finding a decent decryption device. Once Juan gets you past the guard dogs, it's gonna be on you to locate the comm spike. According to the data we have, it's in the prototype phase, meaning there should only be a single device aboard the station. Basically, you break it, you bought it. Unfortunately, I have no idea. Like Neva said, it's a prototype, so it could look like anything. Once you're inside SY920 and you're behind their firewalls, you should pick through their computer system. With any luck, it'll point you the right way. Oh, and one more thing. SY920 is a UC military installation. That means it's guarded by heavily armed troops 
And we both know those idiots don't mess around. If you intend to turn the place into a shooting gallery, you might want to be sure you're hauling an arsenal, because you're gonna need it. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. Okay, so I'm gonna arrange a meeting with Juan at Kay's place in the well. In the meantime, I'll make sure Jazz comes up with a solution to the electromagnetic atmosphere problem at Bannock 4. Oh, okay, you'll make sure. More like get drunk while Jazz does all the hard work. Typical. Privileges of rank, my darling. We'll discuss it a little later. And you, get the hell out of here. And don't come back without that calm spike in your cargo bay. I'm gonna leave that up to you, Rook. If you get into deep trouble, and you think bringing her into the fold is gonna make the difference, tell her whatever you want. At some point, Delgado's gonna be promising everyone their cut of Crix's legacy. If you want him to stick with the fleet, it's inevitable. But until the money's within reach, the less people that know, the better. Good luck. If you want to stay under the radar, I've got just the thing. I don't mind helping, but it'll cost you. Oh. Neva's new recruit? Ask me those murdering assholes should be blasted in the space dust. Ah, you must not be used to pirates being so cordial. But in the heart of New Atlantis, we have to do our best to keep up appearances. I can't afford to be as rough as some of our cohorts. It's bad for business. Careful, the walls have ears. SY920 is one of my regular stops, so I already have the necessary approvals. Neva says you're after a piece of UC tech. So to get it, we're going to need to get you on board. I can do that, but I have conditions. Good. If I can be candid, for this job to work, we'll have to do this my way. We take my ship, and you're a member of my crew. But make no mistake, once you board, the risk is entirely yours. This route is highly lucrative, and sacrificing it is not an option. It's not personal. If you're caught, that entire installation will be on you. There's nothing I can do for you at that point, except send flowers to your next of kin. Good, then we have a deal. In any case, when you're ready, meet me at my ship. It's the Jade Swan. And make sure you're prepared for the long haul. Once you're on board SY920, you can't come and go as you please. We'll talk more on the ship. Glad you're in the Hardly. fleet. If you weren't, I would have killed All you. right, a few things to note. When we get to the checkpoint, UC military will be hailing us. Let me do the talking. Return your piece of cargo if you have to. Good. Say nothing and let their minds fill in the gaps. As long as we aren't actually stuffed into the cargo hold with the rest of the crates. You'll have the same accommodations as my crew, provided you follow the rules. Now, like I said before, once we take off, there's no turning back until this job is done. If you need to take care of anything before we leave, do it. If you want to ask me any other questions, go for it. All okay. right, then get Hello. comfortable. We leave for SY920 immediately. All crew prepare for takeoff. Routing power to engine and grab drive. All systems.
next bounty's gonna be my last. And it's off to Neon to retire. As long as the credits keep rolling in. Okay, we're in. Good. First things first. The station is enormous, with checkpoints everywhere. To get past them, you'll need a military uniform. And to get a uniform, you'll need to get to the barracks. There should be a way through the vents. You can get to them via the maintenance door downstairs. There's an intercom there as well, where we can make contact. Once you get a uniform, it should be fairly easy to find an elevator to the command bay. But, if at any point your cover's blown, I'm gone. I would hope not. But if they do, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Either way, for now, get on that station and find that intercom. We'll talk more then. Hold up. This area is for SY920 military only. Rules are rules. Can't let you in unless you're military. Well, maybe if you hurry. All right, fine. You're good. Just be quick about it. That goes for your friend, too. Understood. Will only be a moment. Hey, authorized personnel only. Let's hope I see a Marine next time. State your business. Logging Ensign level clearance. Go on ahead. Your friend there have the same clearance? Our commanding officer sent us both, so yes. Then you're both good to go. A lot picked that easily since I traveled with Vladimir Sol. Clearance code, Marine. All right, Ensign, let's hear it. You're clear, Ensign Akasaka. I assume the two of you are together? We're from the same unit, yes. Then you're both clear. Find out what you've been up to. 
You are, and I've delivered you just as the Gardel asked. That being said, I can stay in orbit for a short while. I'll need to send word to Delgado anyway, if you don't get off that station. But it looks like you'll need to find your own way off the ship. That doesn't mean you're trapped. On a station this big, there are bound to be other vessels you can steal. As a member of the Crimson Fleet, I trust you can handle that. I don't know what you're after, but my guess is you're looking for a scientist. It might even help if you pick up a lab coat and use it to blend in. You've made it this far without engaging in combat. I trust you'll have no issues moving further. It was an honor to work with a true professional. Good luck. If you make it out alive, next time you're at the Nova, I'll buy you a drink. favor, Marcin. Would you prefer to court-martial? Dishonorable discharge? Because all of that was on the table. I would have preferred things to remain as they were, so I made a mistake. But my work on the Comspike was and is irrelevant. Dr. Vogel will do just fine without you. Besides, we both know the only reason you were on that project was to bloat the budget so we could embezzle the creds. And to that end, your share of the funds should be transferred to your gal bank account shortly. What am I supposed to even say to that? Those funds are the reason I don't have a job. You can start by saying thank you. Hell, I even warned you not to poke the bear. Uh, Commander Natara being the uh, Ursi predator in this analogy. <sighs> Aaron was right. I should have never hit send. Yeah, you screwed up. Royally. But, you can protect Dr. Gong and all the King's subjects by keeping your mouth shut from now on. Yeah. Hey, you want my advice? On some planet at the edge of the galaxy where you can relax for a bit. Lean back. <laughs> really dig your feet in the sand. Just... Get your mind off all of this. Oh, and stop with the sad puppy dog face, too. <laughs> Makes you look guilty. And what kind of face am I supposed to have? The face of someone who got away with it. <sighs> Intercepting transponder data in the Hoffa system might be promising. Wait, who are you? Why are you in here? Did you not see the sign? Don't you mean access to the ship? Because the comm spike isn't a device, it's a module. It's attached to a prototype in one of our docking ports. We're still in the testing phase, running decryptions across a variety of signal types. But the results so far have been very promising. It can even interpolate signal data lost in the retrieval. It really is a wondrous technology. Yes, it's not quite cracking the Enigma code, but it will give us a significant tactical advantage. We'll be able to infer everything from battle plans to meal consumption. Not that we'd care about that sort of thing, outside of the effects of diet on combat readiness. And yes, there are certain kinks to be worked out, missing parts, and the occasional traumatic injury here and there, but it's all part of the adventure. Yes, it's not the destination, but the journey that matters. <laughs> Particularly when the destination is death. But don't worry. We've corrected the problem with the ship's life support systems, and statistical models show a failure rate of less than 
In short, I've requested a full squadron of these brave and fearless marines to be transferred to the station. They'll give the prototype a final run, and provided there are minimal casualties, we can present our findings to Mast. Splendid. That was fast. I thought I put in the request this morning. Normally my requests aren't given this much attention, let alone haste. It seems a tad suspicious. Commander Natara has never once shown me any favor. Why would she start now? I see. It would have been nice if they kept me in the loop. I, I am the project lead, after all. Commander Natara, you say? Oh, well, we don't want to make her angry. She's terrifying. All right, you've convinced me. You're the new test pilot. You'll need a uniform and a terminal password to authorize a flight and get past Natara's cumbersome checkpoints. The uniform you can get in the locker room area, the password you get from me. You'll find the prototype ship at docking bay 8. Use the password to access the flight terminals in the control center. And of course, best of luck. You are doing science a great service by undertaking this sacrifice. Stop right there, Ensign. There's been word of suspicious behavior from someone matching your description. All right. Perhaps you'd like to elaborate. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember now. Well, if you say so. All right, you're clear. Just keep in mind there's been reports of a possible intruder on the premises. Well, well, well. Welcome back, Rook. Looks like you got a new toy for me. Go on in and give everyone the lowdown. We'll take care of things from here. Rook. You see, you'll never crush the fleet. We may not have official security. Nice to know Neva was right about you. It's good to have a promising rookie with the fleet. Surprise? Neva talks tough, and frankly, she is tough. But she's not a machine. I won't deny I helped. Let's hope the compensation reflects that, huh? Anyway, I believe I owe you a drink. It's the last time I'm paying, of course. Because if Dalgado's right about Crix's legacy, you've earned more than your fair share already with that calm spike. Yeah. Although, I get why you didn't give me the details. If I had known this was about the legacy, I might have asked for a bigger cut. Sounds like you're on board as a true believer. I have to admit, the way things are going, I'm starting to believe myself. Discovering Crix's legacy would solve one of the settled system's great mysteries. Oh, I'm as curious and excited as anyone to see what we'll find. Anyway, I've kept you long enough. Now that you've had your drink, and my debt is paid, it's time for you to give Delgado the good news. To stop here, then God down on the tea. surface of Suvorov. You check out the Reckoner's Corps. She's a beaut, ain't she?
Jasmine tells me that you not only brought us the comp spike, but an entire prototype UC ship. I'm impressed, Rook. Very impressed. Don't worry your pretty little head about your damn ship. We had it brought back here safe and sound. Now pay attention. Dale went out of his way to tell you how impressed he was. You just gonna leave him hanging like that? Should have taken the compliment, Rook. Dale doesn't give those out often. Juan gave us the full rundown of your little smash and grab operation. She gave you some really high praise. Said you were a pro. And from what I hear, receiving praise from Juan Dayu is quite an accomplishment. All in all, a job well done. Now, on to the business at hand. Jasmine, are you there? Yep, I'm here, boss. What's up? How's it going? I already have two of my crew tearing the ship apart from one end to the other. Comp spike shouldn't be too tough to extract. I'm looking forward to seeing what those UC techs have been up to. Keep me posted. All right. That leaves our electromagnetic atmosphere problem. And I think we've discovered a solution. There's a corporation in the city of Neon called Jenardyne. They're responsible for the massive conduction grid that powers the city. We get our hands on their electrical absorption tech, and Jasmine swears she can tame it to handle Bannock 4. You damn right she can. My girl can piece together a jump engine with her eyes shut. Literally, I've seen her do it. Lost good money on that bet. All right, let's not get carried away, neighbor. Now, why don't you give us the info on our Neon contact? You get to meet up with the lovely Estelle Vincent. She's had her deft little fingers on the pulse of Neon for some time now. Whatever info you need, I guarantee she can get. Estelle is one of the most reliable captains we have in the fleet. If I want something done, there's none of the typical bullshit. It gets done, and afterward, we all split the cash. You'll find I rarely imply things. In fact, I take pleasure in declaring my words straight to your goddamn face. Here is an example. I want you to do everything Estelle asks. Follow her instructions to the letter. She is valuable to the fleet. You piss her off and we lose her as a contact, you're going to be answering to me. Understood. We'll do our best to remain on her good side. Never mind her good side. You'd be better off appealing to her bank account. That is what drives her. Estelle will be waiting at Madame Savage's place. I'd say don't keep her waiting, but chances are she won't mind. Girl loves her liquor. And keep your eyes on the price. Neon's one big distraction for people like us, so I want you focused. We are one step away from Quix's legacy, and we cannot afford any screw-ups. Thanks for making me look good. I would have had to kill you otherwise. It's tough not seeing any action, but securing a station like this is The commander... It seems you had quite the eventful mission on your hands. You still have the Crimson Fleet's trust, and you were able to spare lives in the process. But you did so with an abundance of stealth and restraint. That's exactly what we're looking for in a CIS-DEF operative. Starting a firefight on SY-920 would have been an inappropriate course of action. We favored the quiet approach. Excuse me, sir. I hate to interrupt, but there's still the matter of the comm spike to discuss. Yes, of course, Lieutenant. Time is short, and we should get to the matter at hand. Please give me your report. With the acquisition of the comm spike, 
the fleet is one step closer to Grix's legacy. And the more people we arrest, the greater the chance that your infiltration is discovered. We're working against the clock here, so let's start by discussing the status of the Comspike. Then it's just a matter of time before she reverse engineers it to fit the fleet's purposes. So what does Delgado have you doing next? Has he solved the Bannock 4 problem? The conduction grid? That's... brilliant. But is it actually possible? It's 80-year-old tech. Sorry, sir. The conduction grid is how Neon generates its power. It essentially absorbs lightning strikes and converts it to usable energy. It would take a hell of an engineer to modify the technology to handle Bannock 4's EM field. An engineer, like Jasmine Durand. That's the case. Inform our contacts on Neon that our operative will be touching down there in the near future. Absolutely, sir. And before you depart, I wanted you to know that your efforts are helping us gain interest among my superiors. They're finally beginning to believe that we can take down the Crimson Fleet and make amends for the UC's embarrassing mistake. You've already come this far, which makes you the most resourceful operative in SysDev's history. If we move in and attack the fleet now, we might not have the resources to bring them down. In addition, they're holding all the tech you need to get to Crix's legacy, so the smartest move is to let you get to it and then bring it to us. I'm confident that once Crix's legacy is in our possession, we'll get the support we need from my superiors to take the fleet down. All right, I suppose that's all for now. I'll be looking forward to your next report. Good luck. And please, be careful. There have been rumors of soldiers smuggling personal items into the station. I've heard the technology. You want station. the stuff or not? I'm still interested. Take it easy. You looking to get zoned? Oh, it's not an act. If you're looking to score some Aurora, we can talk later. But for now, since you're clearly the rook that Delgado sent, let's talk business. Save both of us some time. Turn around, fly back to the key, and tell the big boss that I'm in no mood to screw around. We'll make this deal when he starts taking me seriously. Come on, give me a break. You're not exactly a top dog over there at the key, now are you? Sending me a rook to handle a job this risky is a goddamn insult. And I'm getting tired of the fleet not taking me seriously. I spent the last three months setting up this job, burned two contacts and a hell of a lot of credits. The whole time, I'm also keeping Bayou off our backs. That idiot even catches a whiff of money and he latches onto you like a damn leech. The few times I've dealt with Benjamin Bayou in the past have been rather unpleasant, to say the least. That's the way it's gonna be, huh? Fine. I don't have a ton of time to stand here and screw around, so I'm gonna make this as clear as possible. You want the conduction grid tech, then you're gonna have to download it from the power core of Jennerdyne's facility in the underbelly. Love the confidence, but before you pull the ripcord, I'm afraid I need to add a bit of a wrinkle. While you're inside Jennerdyne, I need you to plant a virus into their system. It's a simple side job that'll earn you some credits. I think you can handle it. That's because you're planning it for me as a favor. Jennerdyne has all sorts of tasty, valuable snacks in their databanks, and I want access. Here, take this micro drive and access the computer in Brayson Bayou's office. It'll do the rest on its own. 
Oh no. Are you scared, little rabbit? Well, don't worry. I've got you covered. Jennerdine's got their place locked down tight. But, as usual, the weak link comes from the people that work there. I recommend you start with Ayumi Komiko, an upper-level exec at Jennerdine. Get your hands on her security pass, and you'll have the run of the place. The catch is that Komiko's having a little fling with Benjamin Bayou. Anyway, you can find Komiko at Euphorico. Talk to the owner of the place, Micah. She'll point you in the right direction. As for dealing with Komiko herself, she's got an office in the Trade Tower if you're looking for something incriminating. The rest is up to you, Rook. When you're done, come meet me at the VIP booth in the Astral Lounge so we can celebrate. Not much to tell, really. Thanks to their nifty little conduction grid, they're able to provide power for the entirety of Neon. Damn thing was supposed to be some kind of miracle invention, turning lightning into usable electricity. Neat trick, right? Only catch is that you need a planet like Voli, where lightning strikes often enough to make it feasible. Guess how many of those exist? Ding! If you said zero, you're absolutely correct. So Jennerdine has been in dire financial straits for years. You're not the only one. The only reason they haven't folded is because they charge exorbitant fees for power. I'm talking two or three times what it costs in New Atlantis. Okay, now, on to round two of our little game. Guess who has a major stake in Jennerdine and soaks up all that delicious profit? <laughs> oh, sorry. That, that's a good one, Rook. No, it's not Jennerdine's shareholders. It's good old Benny Bayou. That son of a bitch has a finger in every single pie in the sorry excuse for a city. Jennerdine's no different. All off the books, of course. How the hell do you think Brayson Bayou got the job down there? It wasn't because of his good looks or smarts. I can promise you that. Just grab that tech and plant the virus. Should be a cinch. Nothing like velocity after a rough shift at Zeno. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bad part of town, buddy. I'm gonna do you a favor. Head back to Bayou Plaza before the Disciples get you. Hey, it's your ass, not mine on the line. Whole area's gone to hell. Us crate rats used to think the Ebside strikers were awful. With all the muggings and shakedowns, but... Now that they're on the ropes... Kinda wish they weren't just holed up in Madame Sauvages. Streets are getting bad real bad. Well, you'll find them at Madame Sauvage's. They're always holding auditions, as they call it. Looking for new blood. So, for uh, being so helpful, chance for a donation. Come on, might be saving my life. What with the disciples and all. I have a heart. Hey, thanks. I mean it. Go back to the plaza. Ain't nothing but shit and misery over here. Yeah, what? Is this important? I'm really busy right now. Let me save you some time. If you're here for a job, we're not hiring. If you're here about the conduction grid tour, we shut it down a year ago. Well, like I said, it shut down. Had to cut the entire tour staff, too. Look, I'm sorry if I'm blowing up at you, but I've got a ton of problems and no time to deal with them all. I'm afraid that things aren't going terribly well around here. I don't care if I'm allowed to or not. I'm happy to get this off my chest. 
The conduction grid went online almost 75 years ago. And since then, we haven't developed a single groundbreaking innovation. At this point, the money we're taking in as a power utility barely covers the waste that's going on in the research and development division. No, of course not. We still produce smaller power systems and backup generators, but nothing even close to the magnitude of the conduction grid. Genadyne needs to come out with something spectacular to put us back on the map. If not, we'll remain stagnant forever, or worse. <laughs> You'd think that, right? The problem is that Brayson Bayou, Administrator Bayou's brother, is currently heading up the R&D division. I swear to you, the man doesn't know the first thing about power systems or electromagnetic technology. Isn't it obvious? Administrator Bayou clearly leaned on Ms. Komiko to get his brother hired. It's nepotism in action. None whatsoever. Look, I'm running out of options. No one above me seems to care what's going on, but I'm willing to take a chance. I have a full report on Brayson that I want to send to Administrator Bayou, but I don't know if he can be trusted. What do you think I should do? It describes my aggravation with how badly Brayson Bayou is running the Research and Development Division. I'm also including a list of all the failed experiments he's greenlit, and how much they've cost Genodyne as proof of his incompetence. I'm praying someone as financially successful as Administrator Bayou might be able to put aside his ego and look at this from a business perspective. You know what? You're absolutely right. I can't allow Brayson to run this company into the ground. Hey, look. Uh, thanks for helping me out with this. It's been on my mind for a long time. If there's anything else you need, any questions at all, feel free to ask. As long as it doesn't get me into serious trouble, ask away. Whoa. Okay, that's crossing the line. I can't discuss company matters like this. Not happening. I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. I'm trying to be reasonable here. I mean, it might be okay. Okay, listen. You didn't hear this from me, but I know she's up to something with Benjamin Bayou. He was in her office a few weeks ago, and they had some kind of shouting match. It got really heated until Bayou stormed out the door. I don't know what it was about, but I happen to know Miss Komiko keeps audio recordings of all her meetings in her safe. And before you ask, yes, I'll unlock it for you. Just don't tell anyone I helped, okay? Sure, sure, no problem. The span above the city is outfitted with a specially developed electromagnetic absorption system. When a lightning discharge hits the span, the energy is instantly distributed across the grid to prevent overload. The energy is then transferred through a series of polyphasic capacitors and rectifiers to ensure all of the negative and positive strikes are equalized. At this point, the energy is clean, and it gets stored in massive storage cells in Neon's underbelly from which it's parceled out and used for power. Thanks for taking the time to talk. So, why did you drag me in here? You said you wanted to we buy sell only the finest nice goods for the discerning are. customer. <sighs> are you sure you're in the right? This place is way out of my price. Oh, my apologies, hey, then. You're the one Please forgive my disrespect. We have quite a few, shall we say, 
thugs that find their way into my establishment and create a disturbance. In fact, there's a particular Seoka member who calls himself Headlock, who repeatedly torments me by damaging my goons. Ah, yes, the authorities. Neon security. <laughs> Corrupt bumbling idiots who couldn't solve a crime if it occurred right in front of their faces. Sadly, I think he's right. Neon security isn't going to do anything about the problem. Anyway, I've already taken up too much of your valuable time. Was there anything else I could help you with? I'm sure you'll find the perfect gift. It was good to have you in my shop. Farewell. If it's too hot to handle, we can take it off your hands. No way. Yeah? Buying, selling? Yeah? Well then let me spell it out for you. You either walked into the TA to buy some goods, sell some goods, or have some liberated goods taken off your hands for a reasonable price. So, instead of wasting my time making me explain how the business world works, let's get a move on. <laughs> Getting caught? By who? Neon Security doesn't give a crap and the Freestar Rangers here are a joke. Look, let's stop playing games. We both know what I'm talking about. Now, what'll it be? You've got the money. Or the goods. Alright, buzz off. I'm busy. Okay, let's settle this once and for all. Velocity or... Welcome. Man. Please, you make yourself comfortable. I can offer you a drink, or perhaps you're here seeking access to our members' lounge, where you can enjoy your Aurora experience in peace. See, you just proved my point. Down your third no, velocity. no, not this again. You people should leave her alone. What do you want with her? I don't know about you, but that's where I'd rather be. Yeah, I guess you're right. Where the hell did Micah learn to mix it? Yeah, like sure. That anyway? Tell me another one. Well, let's face it, some you debt collectors are low-life assholes. She's broke, okay? Now get out of my club before I get really pissed off and have you thrown into the street. No, <laughs> really. I'd like to see you try. The... The Crimson Fleet? Oh my, I I'm sorry. I had no idea. I didn't mean anything by it, really. Sorry, I just... Well, I worry about her. Ayumi owes a lot of money around town. I'm trying to help her out. But, you know, I have a business to keep afloat. If you want to talk to her, you can find her in the members' lounge. Of course, access to the lounge is going to cost you. And I'm not changing my mind about that. Excellent. Then here is your access key. Please let us know if anything in the lounge interferes with your comfort. Enjoy your stay. Yeah. What do you want? Uh, you must be zoned out of your mind, because there's no way anyone sober would say something like that. The Crimson Fleet, huh? This is interesting. So tell me. What does Delgado need with my Pastor Genodyne? How the hell did you find that? It was Estelle Vincent, wasn't it? That bitch. I knew I should have kept that somewhere else. Here, take this pass. It should get you through the storage room and you to the facility. I'm warning you, though. Once you're inside, 
You're trespassing in a high security zone. That means they shoot on sight. Good luck. You're going to need it. I suppose if I don't explain, a copy of that recording you found might end up on the next SSNN report. Okay. Fair enough. A few years back, the previous CEO of Jenardyne went missing. As the COO, I was next in line for the job. Instead, Bayou muscled his way into the company and gave me an ultimatum. Either back up his bullshit Mr. Harada identity, or I'm gone. I had no choice. But I decided right then and there, I was going to do whatever I could to take what was rightfully mine. If that meant seducing Bayou to tip him off balance, then so be it. Luckily for me, Micah's been incredibly understanding about the whole thing. More than you can possibly imagine. Micah is the only person in this godforsaken city that's kept me from going completely under. She doesn't want money, doesn't use me for influence or as a stepping stone to get ahead. She loves me for being me, and I love her for being the same. And when this stupid bullshit is over, and Bayou is ten fathoms deep under Neon, we'll be there for each other. Forever. I just know this is gonna come back to bite me on the ass. I just know it. Oh! It smells horrible down here. Oh, how can these workers stand the smell of rotten fish and goodness knows what else? I was wondering how long it would take you to get down here. If you want the encryption cipher, you're welcome to it. I just don't want anyone getting hurt. Uh, when you access the computer in the power core, it sent a notification to be here. I knew you were coming, I, I just didn't know when. No, no catch. I'm not trying to trick you. You want the cipher? It, it's yours. At this point, I'd do anything to get back at my brother. He deserves everything he's got coming to him. <laughs> You're kidding, right? My brother is Benjamin Bayou. The one and only. He's the administrator of Neon. And the reason I'm so damn miserable. I think you could safely say that most of Neon would agree. You know, I've spent my entire life living in Ben's shadow. Everything always works out for him. While, I, while I've been bouncing from one job to the next, barely keeping afloat. And all the while, he laughs at me behind my back. <laughs> Thinks it's hilarious to make fun of his, his stupid brother. Like I wouldn't eventually find out. Tyrants like your brother eventually fall. It's inevitable. Perhaps you should just give it some time. That wouldn't do any good. For every scheme he's gotten himself into, he has a bulletproof exit strategy. The man's virtually immortal. Ugh, that's true. He's a slippery man who can worm his way out of any legal situation. You know what? I am sick to death of being pushed around. It's my turn to take control for once. The passcode for my terminal is GEN-41A18. That should give you access to the cipher and whatever else you need. I'm 
getting out of here while I still can. After you're done, I suggest you do the same. Because he's a two-faced son of a bitch, that's why. It's not like I should be surprised. When we were younger, we never got along very well. I mean, he's 11 years older than I am. We had two different mothers. Might as well have been from two separate families. statement. I never knew my actual mother. She was my father's mistress. And I was told she vanished from Neon when I was only two years old. Ben's mother, she didn't give a crap about me. Wouldn't even let me call her mom. I just had to call her Liliana. <laughs> Can you imagine? And then there's dad. So buried in the day-to-day -day operations of Neon, he didn't have time to pay attention to his bastard son. Yeah, maybe. Or, he could just be a first-class asshole who takes after our father. Look, I appreciate what you're trying to do, and, and it's nice to get this off my chest, but talking about it isn't going to change a thing. That's why I gave you the encryption cipher. Anything I can do to stick it to Ben, that's the real therapy. Feels good to be in control for a change. kept you. I believe we have a lot to discuss. It's obvious you're here to meet someone. Fortunately for them, they rented this VIP room under a false name. I assume that same someone provided you with that clever little virus you installed into Genodyne systems. Oh, I will. With or without your help. You know, I should give credit where it's due. That virus is quite impressive. It will cost me tens of thousands of credits to remove. That's the last time I'll ever take the Crimson Fleet's capabilities for granted. Probably. But do you want to know why that's not going to happen? It's because I don't negotiate with pirates. They don't understand commitments or contracts. How to get the deal done with finesse. No. For your kind, it's only brute force and violence. Shoot first, take whatever you want, and ask questions later. That's not how I do business. That's what they tell me. Look, I'm not here to debate. I'm here to make an offer. All you have to do is tell me who's profiting from the virus you've uploaded. In return, I'll let you leave the city alive. You make my skin crawl, dare you? Really? That's the story you're going with? Very well. There's a body that Neon Security is going to be discovering very soon. One with concrete evidence that links you to the murder. I'd say you have about one hour to leave this place before you have a price on your head. You'd have someone killed to pin the crime on us. Oh, you're a wretched excuse for a human being, Bayou. So, I assume this concludes our little arrangement, and you'll be leaving our fair city. Oh, when you get back to the Key, be certain to give Neva and Delgado my warmest regard. 
Glad you're back. Sorry about the whole Benjamin Bay you think at the Astro Lounge, but I didn't have much of a choice. Can you believe the nerve of that smug son of a bitch? Man is priceless. So <laughs> I've heard. Throwing yourself under the bus like that. Ouch. You are one crazy son of a bitch. Yeah, I'm pretty much dead in the water at this point. Since Bayou flagged the virus, I can't risk accessing the system now. All that work I did trying to crack Jennerdine is gone. Now I'm in a bit of a bind. The prep work for this job put me in deep for a bunch of cash, and I have no way to pay it all back. That's pretty cool of you to offer, but I know what he's gonna say. Sorry, Estelle. This was your scheme. You're on your own. Believe me, he's not gonna be much help. Look, I was hoping you'd pick up on what I was trying to ask. What the hell with it? I'll just ask. Can you cut me in for a little bit of cash you're making on this job? I mean, I did get you inside and practically hand you the data on the grid. She's right, you know. Without her help, you never would have found your way into Genodyne. I appreciate that. I really do. Having each other's back is what makes the fleet stronger, you know? How much uh, are you willing to part with? This is perfect. It will definitely help. Thank you. We appreciate your help, Estelle. All right, I guess we're done here. Tell Delgado if he ever needs me for anything else. I've still got his back. And hey, you won't be hearing Rook from me anymore. As far as I'm concerned, you're one of us now. Lifeblood of the fleet. If anyone tries to tell you otherwise, you send them to talk to me. I hear things are heating up back at the key, so I might fire up my bird and head over to check things out. Rumor has it that Delgado has some solid info on the Crix's legacy story he's been hawking for the last few years. If there's even a chance that it's true, I want to be there when Shinya Voss starts splitting the loot, if you catch my meaning. I hear things... Rumor has it that Delgado has... If there's even a chance... Completely ruined? Nah. I was hoping it would stay on Jennerdine's mainframe for the long term, but hey, at least it's already fed me a huge amount of data. Nix really knows what he's doing, though he charged me about six months worth of earnings. With any luck, I'll be able to recoup my costs in no time. Tell Neva she still owes me a drink for our poker game. You good? Inside's a bad place for me. How can I be of service, Captain? All hell's breaking loose, Rook. Delgado needs you in the repair bay with Jazz as soon as possible. Oh, that's hilarious. You're a real comedian, you know that? Now get your ass to the repair bay. Go! You are sure we will have those defense batteries up and running? No, 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 no. I'm not sure. They're in bad shape, Del. Really bad shape. I I'm already using duct tape and spit to keep the station from falling apart, and you want me to pull a rabbit out of my hat? I don't want to hear excuses. I want to hear that it's going to be fixed. Period. Get it done. All right, all right. I'm on it. You want to quit standing there and hand over the conduction grid data? Nothing you need to worry about. Stay in your own space lane and let Jazz do her damn job. Now, do you have what we sent you to Neon for, or not? Ah, perfect. I'll take that. <laughs> Dependable as always. Unlike some people we know. Oh, that's real funny. All right, listen up, because I don't want to repeat this twice. We've gotten word that UC Sysdef is massing somewhere nearby for an attack on the key. 
While we prepare for their arrival, I want you to head straight for Bannock 4 and bring Crix's legacy home. I have a very reliable source at Mast. They were so concerned that the threat was real, they actually jumped the information out to us right away. Lay it out, Jess. All right, first things first. I'm gonna upload this data you snagged from Jennerdyne into the Keys databanks. All you need to do is build and then install a conduction grid module onto your ship. Oh, and if you haven't already, you'll need the comp spike module installed as well. While we're at it, perhaps we should fetch your groceries for you as well? Once your ship is ready, jump out to Bannock 4, board the Legacy, and bring us the cash. Of course there's a catch. What, you thought this would be easy? After you board the Legacy, be on the lookout for two transfer modules. They're special keys that allow access to the ship's vault. Once you locate the vault's control center, hook up the data core I'm gonna give you, and download everything they've got. And before you get any bright ideas, like running off with the money, that currency is going to be heavily encrypted. Only a genius like Shinya will be able to crack that encryption. So bring it back here right away. Are you kidding? Everyone around here is a traitor. Look, I'm gonna make this real simple for you. If that money ends up anywhere but the key, I will hunt you down and pry it out of your dead hands myself. Now get moving. Now get your ass to Bannock 4. Use by Those mission... Some missions require stealing from settlements. Be sure to gear up at the depot. Until next time. I hope Bog has something strong enough to run for you. Too many missions. Not enough time. I need to get those defensive batteries online, so make this fast. The comm spike traces and decrypts coded signals. As long as you have the transponder ID, you can track pretty much anything. That file you lifted from the Galbank archives contained the legacy's transponder code, which I'll program into your nav system. All you have to do is get within the vicinity of Bannock 4, and the comm spike will automatically point you to the target. Cute toy, huh? Not a problem. Conduction grid data is all set up in the system, so it should be an easy install. I bet you would. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's take a look. I need to get those defensive batteries on. Not a problem. You just watch your butt out. I need to get those defensive well, you already know that the conduction grid does a pretty nifty trick. It absorbs extreme voltage and converts it to usable power on Neon. The version for your ship can still absorb incoming electrical energy, like, say, the EM fields surrounding Bannock 4, but it can't store the power. Instead, it just scatters the EM harmlessly away from the hull, insulating you from frying every circuit aboard. As a nice side effect, I'm betting the module will make your ship somewhat EM weapon resistant and boost its shield regen. <laughs> Lucky you. There are three defensive batteries, basically high-powered military space turrets, triangulated around the key. They were part of the UC's original defenses for the station. Pretty effective, too. Can put some serious hurt on enemy spacecraft. The good news is that the batteries have an incredibly wide field of coverage, so they can pick off ships trying to reach the key from any vector. The bad news is that they're 100-year-old tech. They keep breaking down and are expensive as hell to keep operational.
Not a problem. Conduction grid data is all set up in the system, so it should be an easy install. All right, let's see what you need. ships have arrived, Commander. Good. After we're done here, arrange it briefly. I want all of their seals over here as soon as possible. Yes, sir. There you are. Where have you been? If I were you, I'd check my tone. I'm in no mood. I've received the reports about your little foray into Genadyne. Last piece of the puzzle before you go after Crix's legacy. Which means it's time to put all the cards on the table and prepare to attack the key. Thanks to your evidence, we are finally able to convince them to task us the necessary resources. Before you jump to Bannock 4, I need to make one thing abundantly clear. The credits from that Gal Bank transport cannot reach the fleet. You have to bring them here at all costs. If Delgado gains access to those resources, we might be touching off a battle we can't possibly win. We've been monitoring the Crimson Fleet's comm chatter in the Crick system. They're gathering allies by making promises based on your success. As much as I hate to admit it, UCC's death won't stand a chance. The fleet will become stronger and more unified than ever. Perhaps the UC should have thought of these potential consequences before incarcerating those people on Suvorov. Perhaps. But instead of spending time debating our predecessors' mistakes, we should be working towards a rapid solution. I'm pretty sure you're joking, but just in case you're fishing for what I'd say, I can tell you this. That money doesn't belong to you, or the Crimson Fleet, or even UCC staff. It was for war reparations and belongs to the people. Allowing Delgado to get Crix's legacy, or keeping it for yourself, would have extremely serious repercussions. Hey, don't worry about it. You've come this far. We know you've got what it takes to bring the prize home. Well said, Lieutenant. All right, I guess this is it. Do whatever prep you need to do aboard the Vigilance, and then head out to Bannock 4. When you return here with Crix's legacy, we'll begin the attack. Good luck. The evidence you've been bringing to Lieutenant Toft has been instrumental in convincing the brass at mast to greenlight the attack. They've sent us support ships, extra troops, weapons. All on account of your role in the operation. To put it simply, if it wasn't for you, this operation would be at a standstill. All my hopes go with you. Good luck. Early reports say your mission on the Siren was a success.
damage.
Recording initiated. Well now, let's see. Another day's gone by. What's it been now? Six weeks? Who the hell knows? Food packs for my ship are gone, so it looks like the clock's running down for me, and Issa wins. What a clever woman. I never saw it coming. I mean, I can't blame her. I was stupid enough to hand her the opportunity. Now the fleet's resting on her shoulders. I only hope she doesn't run the whole operation right into the ground. <sighs> anyway... Let me just sit down in this chair. <sighs> yeah... There we go. <sighs> Best view in the house. All that money staring me right in the face and it's completely worthless. This is a nightmare. Worst kind of prison imaginable. I'd trade every last credit of it away to be back in New Atlantis, running with the scar. Start my life over again. But enough dreaming. I've got to face the inevitable. This is where I'm spending my final days. Hopefully. Someone with at least half a brain will follow in my footsteps and bring the score home to the Crimson Fleet. If anyone finds this message, <laughs> tell Issa that I don't blame her for what she's done. Most important, tell her to keep the fleet strong. Crew recording terminated. Initiated. Son of a bitch! Nothing. Complete waste of time. I've tried everything I can possibly think of and I end up right where I started. Oh, here I thought I was so clever. Thought I had it all figured out. First, fix my ship and get the prototype shielding back online. Second, shunt the power from the cred tank array back to the system to drain the credits. And then third, haul ass back to my ship before the EM field rips apart the legacy. Three easy steps, right? Only problem is, I'm stuck at step one. Every system on my ship is dead, and there's nothing aboard this ship to use for repairs. <sighs> I can't believe I came all this way just to end up stuck here like the poor bastards who ran this ship. <sighs> Actually, wait a second, Issa, Issa will figure it out, I, I told her where I was going for a reason, she's smart, she'll, she'll know something's up when I miss the rendezvous, after all, we're supposed to split the loot, all I have to do is sit tight and wait until she figures out that something's gone wrong, and she'll come here looking for me. <laughs> In the meantime, I should, uh, start rationing my food. <laughs> I could be waiting for a while. Crew recording terminated.
What can I help you with? Really? I'm surprised you have to ask. You gave Commander Ikonde your word that you'd bring Crix's legacy to the Vigilance and end the Crimson Fleet once and for all. And in my eyes and in the eyes of Constellation, your word is your most valuable asset, far more valuable than what that data core holds. So you're going to have to ask yourself, is it worth selling your morals for those credits? Fleet scouts popped up right when you jumped in. Good. Is that it? Is that Crix's legacy? <sighs> Amazing. Ensi, take this and enter it into the data core analyzer. I'm on it, sir. You see, Lieutenant? I told you he wouldn't let us down. I have to admit, I'm impressed. Encrypted or not, it's quite a lot of money to be carrying around. The temptation must have been excruciating. <laughs> it just so happens we did. And with all that money you're carrying, can you really blame us? You could have set yourself up for life, but instead, you chose to do the right thing. It's incredible. Of course. I have a team of decryption experts from Galbank itself on standby. If they can't decrypt that currency, no one can. I wasn't lying when I said that we had every contingency completely covered. I totally understand. I can assure you that we'll take full responsibility for Crix's legacy from here on out. Now, on to other more pressing matters. We received confirmation that the fleet ships were scouts sent to probe our defenses. Unfortunately, one of them grabbed jumped away before you arrived. <laughs> Which means that Delgado will have the Crimson Fleet prepping defenses of its own. If Delgado's aware of our attack fleet, then we're at a tactical disadvantage. We have little time to waste. I've spent years studying the Crimson Fleet's tactics. Their decision to sacrifice those smaller ships told me everything I needed to know. That's the plan. Lieutenant, if you wouldn't mind explaining our strategy. Yes, sir. The Vigilance is equipped with the latest in hyper-resistant shielding, making it the only ship that can safely approach the key. The catch is, that the key has access to three orbital defensive batteries that can fire electromagnetic energy. One hit, and we lose those fancy shields. Our mission is to take out those batteries. In fact, I'll be personally leading the assault on Battery Alpha. I need you to be my support. Sadly, we didn't get as much support for this mission as I would have liked. There just wasn't enough evidence gathered. We weren't able to convince Mass to lend us additional squadrons. They feel like they've committed too many resources already. That means we'll have to take out all three batteries ourselves. It's unfortunate, yes. But we wouldn't be here if I didn't believe you could do it. We've also given you a call sign, Renegade, to help coordinate our movements during the attack. Once those batteries are destroyed, you board the key and bring Delgado to justice. You won't come quietly. You do what you have to do. No, I don't. I don't send my people on suicide missions. Lieutenant Toft and I are confident you have what it takes to get the job done. Well, this is it. After years of planning, it all comes down to this moment. All my hopes and my best wishes go with you. Good luck.
time to show these pirates how Sistef does things. Every soldier here is ready for you. Alright, Alpha Squad. Follow Renegade Fleet. Take out that battery. Rattrap down. Not like I'll just leave anyway. There's shit.
and prepare to be boarded. isn't the same as the real thing. made a mess on this station, would anyone even notice? I can decrypt and re-encode thousands of credits in seconds, but something as simple as this, I didn't see it coming. Not in the slightest. And now because of you, my bomb's been activated. Which means I'm as good as dead. Simple. If I step one foot outside of this room, I'll explode, and that'll be that. So either I wait here until I starve to death, or I walk away and end it all. <laughs> That's the Crimson Fleet's idea of punishment. Now that Sistef is here, the Crimson Fleet can't afford to have everything I know fall into the wrong hands. The moment the Vigilance arrived, Delgado pushed the button which is as good as putting a gun to my head and pulling the trigger. Forgive me if I don't take you at your word, since you've been lying to me from the very beginning. I've paid you well, treated you with respect, and kept trouble off your back more than a few times. Look me in the eye and tell me why you've allowed this to happen to me. You owe me that much. At 
this point, I can't blame Delgado for activating the bomb. If I was in his place, I'd do the same thing, without hesitation. Well, now that you're here, I don't expect that you'll stay and watch my rather spectacular ending. So why don't you just get out of my sight and let me die in peace? After everything I just said, you'd still be willing to help me. I must be a complete fool. Because even though it makes no sense, I believe you. The only way to deactivate the bomb is through Delgado's computer and operations. You'll probably need his ID to get in. I don't know why you're helping me, but I sincerely hope this isn't another one of your tricks. The, con the controls for the bomb are in the briefing room. If you can't disarm it, I'm sure they have something we can use. I don't know who the hell... What the hell? Looking out for number one, you know. And now you suddenly... For once in your life. Well... It is obvious. I have already locked. Let's see how far. <laughs> no. If this is true... And spend the rest of my life in the brig... Without a credit to my name... Why would I do that? So you noticed. And yeah, believe me, keeping people from burying a knife in your back wasn't easy. Now that's more like it, Rook. You're a killer. And if you want something, you threaten a person for it. Fine. You win. Standing down the reactors. With the legacy gone, we're dead in the water anyway. Before you have Ikan to lock me up, I'm gonna leave you with some parting words. Whether you know it or not, you're damn good at being a pirate. It's in your blood. One of these days, it's all gonna hit you. And I'll be waiting for you in my cell to tell you I told you so. Bravo! Ah! At ease, soldier. I believe congratulations are in order. With this decisive blow, the end of the Crimson Fleet is all but assured. But as much as I'd like to begin this celebration, technically we're still in the process of wrapping up the operation. On that note, Lieutenant, what do you have for me? Reports are coming in right now, Commander. Delgado and Shinya Voss have been taken into custody. Also, we've transferred personnel to the Key to secure the location until the United Colonies decides what they want to do with the station. And what about Neva Mora? According to our reports, Neva led the strike force that attacked the Vigilance. Unfortunately, that was the last we saw of her. It looks like she managed to escape. We don't know her current whereabouts, but I have our operations team looking into it. That's fine. Overall, excellent news, Lieutenant. I have to admit, for the first time in seven years, I don't know what to say. About you, I know that was difficult. You hanging in there? You have no reason to feel guilty about anything. No matter how close you were to the fleet, you have to remember that they're terrible people that did terrible things and don't deserve your guilt. I've twisted arms and cashed in some favors at mast. 
I wanted to make sure you got a share of the money you recovered from the legacy. Call it a reward, a token of appreciation, whatever the hell you want. But you've absolutely earned every credit. While it was satisfying enough to watch the Crimson Fleet meet its end, having an account brimming with credits is a pleasant bonus. Well, yes, I believe it did. But even if the money is ever returned to its rightful owner, and I believe it will, eventually, I'm sure they'd agree you deserve your share. Don't thank me yet. If it had been completely up to me, you'd get a lot more than they're giving you. Now that you're rich and famous, maybe you'll still remember us little people, huh? Decorum, Lieutenant? Damn. I'm going to be really sorry to see you go. You've really become an important part of our team. It won't be the same around here without you. Although, if you feel like staying aboard, I'm sure I could give you access to the SysDef mission board. That is, if you can stand spending another minute with us on vigilance. I understand. You've done more work under my command than some law enforcement officials see in a lifetime. If you change your mind, the Vigilance will be stationed here at the Quay for a while. We have quite the mess to clear up. Anyway, enough talk. You've earned a break, and I'm sure you wish to celebrate. Here's your promised reward. And wherever you might find yourself, my best wishes travel with you. 